Got a fellow northerner in the Guildford studio today, Steve Beatty. And we've not had anyone yet describe a harrowing prison experience in Japan. So that's where we're going today. So thanks very much for coming on, Steve. No worries. People are wondering how the hell did you end up in prison in Japan? And before your arrest, you had a few near misses, didn't you? Yeah. What What were you specialising in back then? Marijuana. Marijuana smuggling. But, uh, yeah, so like four years before, I had a bit of a successful mission, as we call it. And uh, How did you get recruited for that? We met some Iranians. <laughs> as you do. <laughs> as you do, yeah. Uh, I was living in Thailand and uh, met, met some Iranians. And uh, some other lads started doing it with them. I mean, this was quite quite a few years before. What years? I did it. When I did it, it was 2004, just before the tsunami. But we probably met them in 2002. Yeah. So I know it was all going on for a bit. And uh, How did they pitch it to you? Uh... <laughs> Uh, not the obvious you want to make some money <laughs> smuggling marijuana and I was like well at the time I was saying I've sold this yeah. I mean I'm a bricklayer by trade so I, I went I went like short money just to, I thought if you needed money just go back home but then as the I guess years went by we were getting away with it and uh, I thought I basically, I, at the time, I just didn't want to go home. I'd, uh, I'd, uh, yeah, so, something had happened. I'm not going to go into, but I thought, I'm not going home. And this was an option. And, uh, like, one, another mayor man had done it to Japan as well. And I was going with him, so we, uh, I thought, let's have a go. Prior to that, though, you'd had some near misses in India, well, Austria, Nepal. No, this so this is the first one. So the idea was we've been to Nepal first to pick it up. Had a jollies there, which was quite good fun. What's it like, Nepal? Brilliant. I loved it, yeah. We went uh, white water rafting up from Ooh. Tibet down there for a few days. The mountain, that big hill up there, you know, that big bit of a, bit of a hill. And uh, then the idea was we went from there back to Bangkok to change the passport. So as you were going into Japan, they didn't like a, a Nepal stamp on. So I, I went to the Maldives. So it looked like I've been to the Maldives. And uh, we had a, we were divers. So we were gonna we had all the diving equipment. We knew for sure they would check one bag, hundred percent. They like really strict the uh, Japan. So we, uh, the plan was get a big bag, bag, bag obviously, like, let's look in this one, whereas it was in all the, very thinly put in the rest of them. So we go from uh, there to Taiwan. We had a week in Taiwan. We stuck there with the uh, uh, tornadoes or something was going on. The ferry there to Okinawa. Okinawa, once, once you're in Okinawa, you're in. Then it was another ferry to the mainland so it was like a it was like a back backwards way in so but so eventually we get us on the ferry we've not seen any english people in taiwan it was pretty uh bleak really on the on the bus also this ferry is like five stories high virtual golf discos and all this kind of thing we're thinking <laughs> oh this is brilliant guess on it there's a, a vending machine open that were it selling <laughs> beers and uh, pot noodles for like i think it's like 18 hour Possibly more. It's a long one. It's like overnight and all that. Anyway, uh, an English guy's on our little our bus, like out of nowhere. And my mate just said to me, he was a little bit worried about the dogs with the spray. They have like a spray on to stop the dog sniffing. Because we'd had the bags about two weeks by then. He mentioned something like, uh, um, I'm a bit worried about that. You know, the, uh, and I went, as he's saying, I went, I went, shut it. I went, I went, all right, mate. He went, oh, yeah, all right, yeah, yeah. English guy, proper look like a copper straight away. I'm going, 
Shit. Oh, and they're going like, uh, where are you from? Like, ah, somewhere down south it was. And then he says, um, so where are you going? So I'm just going to do my uh, visa run. I live here. I'm just doing the visa run. You have to do it here. And we're going, all right, okay, cool. Gets on there. So all I can say, it's probably five stories. These, these huge things. But there's us three and about four, uh, like, workers. Goes to the, uh, the your room. He's only put, they're all, we're only all in the same room, three of us. We're going. So I think there's like two, two doubles. And we says, uh, he's saying, oh no, we're, we're not supposed to be in the same room. We go, no, they're probably. And anyway, next minute, he's got his own room. And me and my mate were going, what do you think about him? And uh, so he's just, he's, I think he was a teacher. He said he was a teacher. You weren't tempted to throw your stash overboard. It gets worse. No. Yeah. Yeah. Believe me, we were very close to it. So uh, we're having a few beers from the thingy, talking away. What are you doing? Oh, we're going diving and blah, blah, blah. We've got all our story completely in our heads, what we're doing. You know, we all, well, we was going to do it anyway, so it was like a, a thing. And uh, my mate went to bed and uh, he was saying, uh, this is, you know, last time I, I came to Japan, I was smuggling marijuana. I'm going, fuck off. I said, well, how, how are you doing that? I said, I just put a lot of light. I think it was Bush, he says. Um, it's from the Philippines. He says, to I'm going, I says, yes, get off your fucking head. He said, right. I said, well, blah, blah, blah. I'm thinking, oh, my fucking God. Oh, my God. I just think I'm, he's definitely a copper. I already think he's a copper. And he's telling me, I've, when do you ever get anybody to talk about things like that, when you're actually doing it? So I uh, casually kind of carried on drinking away and thinking, oh, shit, 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 shit. But, you know, like, but talking about, I'm just thinking, I'm not going to go straight away. I finish my beer, whatever. I'm just going to nip to the toilet. I'm going to a room. He's a fucking copper. He's just talking about smuggling. He's going, what do you mean? Go, right, what are we going to do? Don't whisper. Right, well, what are we going to do? Are we going to throw the bags off now? Yeah. Or is it just a mad coincidence that uh, he's not? And I said, by the end of the day, if he's on us, the bags go over. We're, we're not going to be nabbed here. I can't see how just throwing the bags over. It's just, so we're going through these scenarios. I had a good, I went in for a penny, in for a pound. Oh, uh, I should have gone with your intuition. No, we got no, we got away with this. Oh, this you got time. away with yeah, this one? Yeah. Oh, okay. So it was all that. Okay, good. Eventually, guess at the end, and we so we, no, he he hadn't done this route before, but we heard somebody had done it, and it was like just a couple of people there. It was about as easy as you can get. Plus, because it was so empty, we thought, oh, this is perfect timing. Gets there, oh no, there's about twenty uh, officials there, and uh, everybody else has won the route. They've only got walking. We've got a, a golf bag. Um. Your main bag, a smaller bag, a, um, a computer bag, a suitcase bag, every one of them's lined with it. And or hopefully the bag that needs checking, which was the plan. CID Jim is what we were calling him. <laughs> we get there, it's easy, he's wandering through, and we're, just, we're you know, we're, 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 we're going for it at this point. I said, um, I think he was called Jim. I'm going, Jim, you want to share the taxi? Just like talking, like normal. And he said something like, he said, no, man, she, you've got loads of bags. So when I hand you, I'm thinking, you can't. <laughs> you know, I went, um, he said, no, you've got, you got too many bags. We'll, we'll meet in that pub that we'd arranged in, uh, I think, in Naha, the, the city there. I'm just thinking, he's just give the nod. He said, you know, this is what I'm thinking. And anyway, we, we cracks on and uh, they literally, they felt the lining of every single bag x-rayed every single bag i've got probably five on me the other guy's got five on him and i'm just going through it all just uh, i was I was pretty good at it to be fair we were like well you know what can you do the one thing that bothered me was i had a computer bag because i'm absolutely rubbish in computer and this is back then where i've never even been on a computer i said what well, don't get me a computer don't put me a computer in because they asked me to open that and they're, they're gonna go why well, have you got a computer you can't even open it 
So I put uh, like a CD player in and loads of stuff in between. They're quite good bags. I'm thinking I would actually use. I you have to do. Would you re use it for that? So um, so anyway, they've gone through the whole lot. I could feel myself drying and drying up. I'm thinking, oh Jesus Christ, let's just get this over with. And then eventually, yeah, they go through. All right, they did. But the golf bag was. They went. I'll just make sure. I'll do the the golf bag again. Like that. Oh God! I think there was like two kgs in the in the golf bag in the in the lining. So if they X-rayed it and felt it, how come they didn't detect it? They were done pretty well because uh, because they, they were done so well. Yeah, yeah. Just like they, thin or something, really like thin, and the, they were like Samsonite bags, yeah, expensive bags, and there's like a board in these quite heavy bags. Yeah. So it's basically it was. I've seen how they do it. They, they re replicate the the board for it's, it's chocolate, you know, the resin, the, wow. the brown stuff. Yeah, and it's smell proof as well. Yeah, good grief. But like later on, when I did get caught, I got to see the bag proper open. Yeah, because they opened it right in front of me and tested it. Yeah. Uh, so. So you had that mishap. So that mishap. Another one at um, uh, India. In India, yeah. oh man! Imagine ending up in an Indian prison. Yeah, well, this wasn't too bad compared to what we went through then. Yeah, with the guy, I'm thinking we're, we're definitely busted. What in. happened in India? So India, what they uh, used to do is, you used to go to the hotel, then you go out and you swap bags. But in in the Indian hotels, they're real nosy bastards. They'll be going, "Oh, where, where do you get that new bag from?" and all this kind of thing. So I went, "Listen, there's got to be another way around this." So they used to pick us up from the airport. And then we get the bag straight away. And I was with another guy who had never done it before. And um, so we get us the bags. Goes in this hotel. The hotel's completely dead, right? I said, uh, it's quiet, isn't it? He says, uh, yeah, only you and one more people. And we end up going downstairs, like underneath the foyer. Opens the door. Got the bags in. It stinks a bush. Like I went, my mate went, these fucking bags stink. Oh. I'm going, shit. I said, yeah, but it's, it smells of bush. I mean, I don't smoke it, but yeah. I know the difference. So distinct. Yeah, the bush and, and that stuff, that's quite... Uh, I said, it's not the same stuff. I said, you smoke it. This isn't what we're carrying. But obviously, it's not going to be a uh, good... It's not a good sign, is it? I said, somebody must be having a crafty one round here in the vents so we were looking around because it must be like kind of at the back, yeah. which, which must have been the case, but yeah. at the time... I go, all right. So I says, right, let's stick the bags in the bathroom, lock the door. You can smell the bags like there was nothing at all. The bags were fine. Fine, yeah. yeah. But the air is not fine. So we put them in there, sat there, had a, we had a beer. Mm. But we'll give it 10 minutes. So if we open that door and it stinks, we're out of here. Yeah. Opens the door, absolutely nothing. Go, it must be somebody, you know. Mm. So he says, right, let, let's go and get something to eat. And uh, so the night before, so we've come in from Nepal. We were coincidentally in Nepal. My, my mate had to do a visa for India. So that's why we're in Nepal. I'm coming in as well. I'm putting the passports in. He's there, I'm there. The woman's saying to me, uh, your passport is, uh, is, why you have two passports? I'm saying, I haven't got two passports. It's one passport. She says, no, it's says, uh, Britain and Northern Ireland. I'm going, I said, no, it's, does it? She went, wait a minute. And then she's off and thinking, oh, Jesus Christ. Next minute, the, the big boss comes back and she's, well, what's the problem? And he's going, oh. says, this is English passport, number one passport in the world. I'm going, yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, so that was a little bit of a... So anyway, so we got lost in Nepal with the hotel the night before. We've gone out, forgot to take a card. We set us off from there, just goes to get something to eat. Goes off in the little tuk tuk things. Set us off. Oh, forgot the card again. Go back, back, back. Let's not go through all that again. Wandering around the streets of Nepal. Why are you going, oh, where the fuck are we? Turns around. So this is like a couple of minutes. There, turn back. We get back to a hotel. There's only us and one person in it. Delhi, Delhi uh, police van. Big white. But. My mate, we pulled up. We don't even see it. He doesn't see it. As we pulled up, he's jumped out to leg it in the foyer. I just go like that. Shit. He's already going past the van, into the foyer. Five or six coppers in there at the foyer. I'm thinking, do I run now? And we're going for the, is it the, 
but it's so fast it happened that he's gone past them, got the card, came back in, got on the tuk tuk, and we're driving away like that. Going, oh, why they not just grabbed us? Why you know it's obviously, and uh, so we set ourselves into a Connaught Square uh, place. And we were absolutely babbing it. But I said then, I said, look, it's got to be a, a mad coincidence, this. It's got to be. They, they have had us. I know the place stunk a dope. I know we're carrying dope. There's nobody in there. There's the, the Delhi Mariah van there. Anyway, so so we sat and thought about, plus, we've only got enough money on us for a, a night out. No passports, no other, all the rest of the money, everything's in there. Mm. No passports. If we'd have had the passports on us, we wouldn't have gone back. Because of that, you know, we, we talked it out. And I says, right, I said, will you stay here? I'll go back and um, have a sniff around. And if it looks good, I said, I'll just, I'll just go for it. So I did that. I, I said I had to be back by one o'clock. I said, not by, back by one o'clock. I'd get on to her and just go on the run. I said, you'll be safe. I'll just, you just get this shit out of here kind of thing. And, um... So I must have been a good hour wandering around these fairly quiet streets. There's a little roundabout there and there's lots of off streets. I'm looking at all cars. And, and in the daytime, I've been playing with these dogs as well. These scratchy dogs. Next to me, they see me. They're all dogs coming all over me. And I'm like, and then, I don't remember you from telling them, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, anyway, but I, I've gone past and I thought, let's go for it. The guy's asleep on the, on the desk. How are you doing, Max? I got the key. And uh, he's going, oh, yeah. I'm thinking this is good. He's, unless he's very good, he's looking good. And I said, uh, I said, what was that problem with the other police before? He's going, oh, I don't know. What? what? I went, oh, oh, it doesn't matter. It must have been whatever. I thought, I'm not going to yeah. go straight downstairs. I scoured the place thinking nothing's been touched, nothing's been touched. I get money, get the money, get wallets and sod all the rest of it. Because I got that and I was out. And I was like, over the, the one o'clock time, my mate, or when I met him in the bar, he's like that. Oh, God. He's, he's so thought, did you abandon the merch? No, no, went went back for it. Took the merch. Oh, no, so so then we've gone back and said, no, we're, we're fine. Yeah. They definitely have, have had us then. Yeah. So we decided what we'd do is, so we got a, we had a few beers, we were proper sinking in back. I mean, we weren't steaming, because you, you like... Doesn't you can't seem to get drunk in these situations because you, <laughs> you, you 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 can't. <laughs> I mean, we had a go at it, and so we went back. Had about a couple of hours sleep. As soon as it got light, got the bags and just I think we even checked out, which got out. As we went out, we see a policeman there. Okay, oh, how do we get a taxi for a uh, conic uh, place? I think it's called. And so we no, 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 no. so we've gone that way, and then like, next minute we're ignoring that, and we're and then we're. We've got an hotel, and when we actually got to Copenhagen, we were going, we were separate. The idea was we we're going to meet at this hotel. All you had to do is go out. It, Copenhagen then was known as a like a complete walkthrough, no uh, customs. And um, I've gone through, he's gone through, no problem. Or I can't remember if I've seen him or not, but I've just gone straight out, got in a taxi, gone to this hotel we would arrange to meet at. Half an hour later, he's not there. Oh shit! Oh, he's, he's, he must have been done somehow. So I get, I get out. I, I haven't checked in that hotel. I'm just like hanging around, like outside on the smoke and that. I ends up going back to there and then ringing up, blah blah blah. And next minute, no. He instead of going, him going out the, getting the taxi, he's end up getting to the train station. And it was just a mix up, but it's one of them like, Jesus Christ. So that was uh, that one. So, yeah. so that was your few, few near misses. Then you yeah, did your first trip to Japan. No, the, the the first one I ever did was Japan. Oh, the first one. Then you had four your near years misses. later. Gotcha. For almost four years later was this episode of the in the Copenhagen, and London, and so you had two days in Narita. Narita Station. Your bag was delayed. Yeah. You're going out with a Japanese girl. Well, I wasn't going out with her. I randomly met this Japanese <laughs> girl. Another one, I thought, copper. Yeah. So as I've landed in, 
we already knew the bags weren't going to come with us. And I'm thinking, oh, that's all right. It's got to be in my favour. Gets there. It's the last last plane at night. And Liverpool were playing Chelsea. I, I remember this. And I just wanted to get an hotel and go and what, find uh, someone to watch the football. I was the last person to leave the airport. I'm pretty sure there was already waiting for me. Because my bag wasn't with me, they kind of going, what do we do? We're going to have to let him go. They were like, they were swabbing me, you're doing everything, just got on and I'm like, I've only got me, me and, and luggage. Then I just thought, this isn't good. I, I pulled over one of the uh, air hostesses and I says, I says, why are they keeping me here? I says, I'm not being funny, I just want to, I need to get me hotel sorted, I want to watch the football. I, I mean, I just carried on as you would, this is what you would be doing, you're going, what's all this about? At the same time, I'm thinking, this isn't good. The, why? Goes, uh, gets a taxi, gets his hotel in Narita, which isn't, isn't that far from the, the airport. Gets in the lift. You remember, I've done like a, or two week in Japan before, like, so I've been all over Japan, and it's, the birds are quite hard to get into, to be honest. I goes in the lift. Hiya, you all right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, where are you from? England, where are you from? So well, I'm like Japanese American, half, half, blah, blah, blah. By the time I've got to the floor, I've had arranged to go out with you for a beer to watch the football. I said, I said, do you know, do you know where uh, there's an English bar or a sports bar? So I want to watch the the football, the soccer. He says, yeah. He says, uh, I'll show you if you want. And I said, well, I'm just going to grab a shower. And I'm thinking, this is, it's never that easy, is it? And I think, can't be, a, can't, she can't be a cop. I said, no, I'm, I thought I'm being paranoid here. I thought I'm going to have to go with it. I'd already arranged to go. Uh, <laughs> so I had a quick shower around the corner in this sports bar. So I was nattering away. She's giving me her story and saying, oh, what are you doing here? And then, um, I give her my story. And then she says, what do you do for a living? I said, uh, I'm a private investigator, actually, in Thailand, which I was. Mad as it sounds. I was <laughs> so she said, a private investigator? I said, yeah, it's like catching. Said, it's not like a real one. I like catching bar girls out. When they, when they go home, the fellas go home, they send the money just to make sure that they haven't. That was the idea, anyway. So, but she's thinking, she can't understand this. She just thinks I'm a, a real private investigator. So we're watching the football. And then next minute, she says, oh, oh Stephen, Stephen, my friend, uh, I've, I've a job for you. I'm going, job between for private investigator? Like, Are you kidding me? Have a guess who I'm speaking to? A copper. I'm going, hello. She said, um, oh, no, no. But whatever he's saying, his English was pretty bad. I'm saying, oh, look, mate, I'm... I'm not working. I'm I'm here on holiday. I'm visiting and uh, blah, blah blah. Just like I'm going. I said, why have you done that? So I just thought he's like desperate. He thinks his wife's cheating on him. Blah blah blah. I said, and he's a policeman. She's going, yeah, he's a policeman. But I'm thinking, are you kidding me? Yeah. Listen, I'm going outside. I'm ringing my mates. I'm going, what the fuck is going on? And uh, so actually, I thought I called it the finger pie test. You know, because you can't mess with them, can you? I thought, if I can get her in bed, then she's not a copper, is she? Also, she's not drinking. She said she couldn't drink. She's, she had a bit of a bad story, which maybe it was true. I, just, I asked them if she was a copper, and they said, that we don't know anything about it. They were like, but they were a bit shifty. Anyway, she said she'd uh, she'd moved from Japan because she was abused as a child, and then going to America, she got um, that kind of thing. She's run all these pills because she's like, her head was well fucked up for it. Which it probably was the truth, looking looking back. But when I'm like trying to go in, at the end of the night, we went and sat down like, on the little bench thing. So you fancy you? I thought, copper. Fucking copper. So I, 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 so what I did, I stopped there that night. The bags were supposed to come the day after. I checked into a hotel across the road that you could see. There was like a big uh, open... So I could see the foyer, not the the entrance. It was like uh, one or two stories up the actual entrance. So I'd um, I planned to watch them going in, seeing oh, all oh, that kind of thing. I even thought of asking her to go and pick the bags up for me. I said, I went, I've got to meet such a buddy in uh, in Tokyo. Could you pick the bag up for me? I thought, no, I can't do it because if she, if she is innocent, she would have got done for it. I thought, no, I can't do it. I'm gonna have to. Uh, I mean, believe me, I was going through, I was on the phone, going through all the options. 
one of the ideas was to go to a, get a ferry out to a South Korea, get a new passport, blah, blah, blah. But I was, I was honestly looking at possibly, at the worst, a two-year sentence. I'm thinking probably one year, because we knew some people that got caught a few years before. Twice as much drugs as me and dodgy passport. Even though man was dodgy, I thought man would get, get, get through. Because it's been used quite a lot. since Four years before I've been using this passport. But it's still in there, isn't it? So uh, I did think if I just get done for uh, two kgs, it was only two, slightly under two kgs. So if they got, if they had four kgs and they got uh, two years for that, two years for the passport, by rights I should get one year. That's my kind of. Uh, I was trying. To, I probably didn't know. I was really think it was that, but I'm justifying the gamble of whatever it was for like one year away. I thought I can handle that. And. Uh, yeah, so, so eventually I just thought, Paul, let's go for it. It's about 11 o'clock in the morning, and I had quite a few beers as well. I'm the last drinking and drinking, going through it all. I did I did my uh, SIM cards in a in court, kind of in the bin, ready to go back. It was all gone good. Cause I'd, I'd actually I'd deleted uh, any messages. But also, I'm going through all the... I'd, I'd had a full night to go through, if I do get caught, confirm my story. My my story that I want to stick to, because I'm bothered about the four years before. It's, it's my first time. I just met this Iranian guy in Bangkok, and uh, oh, I'm an idiot. It's, it's like a first time offence. Sorry, I done it. I thought, you know, the less I'm involved with anything, the you know, because I just wanted to be that lone uh, idiot, which I was, and uh, so I go for it. Go in there. So it's two stories up. It's all looking good. Goes in the foyer. Oh, no, sorry, just before as well. I tried this one. I got a taxi driver to go in there, pick it up for me, and bring it up to this, this hotel. He's going, what? I said, go to the hotel there, just pick my bag up and bring it here, please. Okay, yeah. So he's gone through. I'm upstairs watching him go through. He's in for a couple of minutes, comes back out. No bag. I said, what happened when he says, oh, you can't do this, they need a passport. I thought, oh, yeah, they do need a passport, don't they? So that hadn't really confirmed the rain. If anything, I thought, that's my favourite, that is. He's only two minutes up there. He's gone. If they're saying anything to him, they probably might have just said to him, so no, we can't give you the bag for real. So I'm thinking, right, go for it. Goes upstairs in the lift, goes in the uh, reception. I, it's my bag here, blah, blah, blah. Oh, no, I, I was ringing up the, um, asking my bag would come yet. Eventually, it, it came. Goes in. Bag's there. There's no police, there's nobody around. I'm thinking, this is good. And also, there's like a, a, a wrapper that goes all the way around. That, obviously. So, I got to my bag, and I, I didn't have the keys for the lock. I said, have you got the keys for the, for the lock? For my lock? I went, oh, no, we, we, we haven't. So, I went, oh, yeah, it's here. Oh, that's good. Ah, this is all good. There's nobody getting me. Ah, thank fuck for that. Gets there, goes to the lift. <sighs> Straight away. Four people from nowhere in suits. Again, they're a copper, but I've gone through this to the fucking copper a few times before, haven't I? So I'm, I'm thinking, but no, I'm, I'm just not straight away. Gets in the lift, and uh, I didn't press anything, and they went, I went, as you up or down? They went, oh, I says, where I'm going? I right, just press down. I mean, <laughs> goes, press down. As soon as it opened, phew, cameras, about 20 people come, uh, one guy comes straight away, grabs hold of me. <gasps> um, he's the policeman. There's a translator there straight away. Um, are you Stephen Beatty? Yeah. Um, uh, is this your bag? Yeah, what what is in the bag? I went the claws and a lot of cannabis, or or some cannabis. They went, oh, uh, they're a bit like, and then within it took about maybe two hours being there, and I was absolutely dying for a piss. And they said they won't let me go to the toilet because I'm honest, I'm knocking them back, building up the uh, gurries to do it, and um, so and. 
as we're in there as well, I may as well laugh at this one. My other friends are ringing up on the phone. So they've, got, they've already got my phone out and everything. Now that it's ringing. My uh, theme tune to the phone is uh, Magnum P.I. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> and they're saying, who's that? And I went, Magnum P.I. <laughs> I went, who, who? I went, no, it's, it's, my, it's them, you know, whatever. And then, uh, yeah, as they, they were just rooting through everything, kind of asking me questions, but nothing of you know, where have you come from, where have you got it from, blah, 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 all these things. At the same time, they're rooting through it. And uh, they, um, as I said, it was cannabis. They, they kept on saying, how do you know it's cannabis? Are you sure it's cannabis? I said, yeah, it's, it's definitely cannabis. They went, just the way it was worded, I thought, it's not cannabis. Or they're trying to say it's not cannabis. Like heroin or something. Or, uh, well, crystal meth. It, yeah. If it was going to be anything, it was going to be that, which is on the same last class day, isn't it? So like going, oh my God, not the old bag, the, the, the switcheroo. And we eventually, when they tested it, they said, if it, if it comes out, in fact, if it's blue or one or the other, I can't remember which one it is, but say it's blue, it was going to be the bad one. If it was brown, it was the good one or red. I'm like, oh, red. <laughs> that. So that was a bit of a relief. <laughs> then I was off. They take you off to the uh, Narita police station then. What's the police station like? Well, at first, it's a... Uh, it's, it's all you're all it's all a shock in it. You're all you're all you're doing is going, Oh fuck, 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 fuck. A bit of an interview there and then you put down we uh I think there was three in the first night. Which um it's not that bad. He, he was an airline pilot, one of them. He was only in for a few days, a bit of fighting. He was a nice bloke, spoke fluent Japanese. So it was he could tra uh, translate what was going on, probably what I was gonna do. Whereas I would have been stuck with the other two guys. It had been very, uh, and so you're in, there's about 10 cells, all with four in, and basically all drug smugglers caught there. Or something that's happened in Narita, like he got in this fight in Narita. But most of them, drug smuggling. Yeah. And they're from all over the world, the smugglers. All over the world, yeah. But, so you have to go in front of a judge. Yeah. Um, that goes on for about, well, I was in there 100 days. You go to the, um, it's called the Saiban, the, like the judgment kind of thing. You have a couple of uh, visits to them, or the prosecutor. Then the, eventually you get the uh, the first sentence. Then you get a, a second, the final sentence. Um, which was uh, not what I expected. But in fact, I make the embassy the first day. He said, you're looking at four to ten years. I'm going... No, no, no. Oh, so I'm looking at one to two year. <laughs> There's no four to ten. No, 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 no four to ten. So well, I said, you don't even know how much I'm carrying. This is you've probably come at the worst time. There's a big crackdown. There's some sumo's been caught smoking it. Some um, some people from a famous uh, university. They've been caught, and uh, yeah, you, you're at the worst time. There's a big crackdown. So as I'm looking at like four to ten, I'm thinking, no way. It was hard to get your head around there. You're looking at that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, eventually, on the first hearing, so I, I, I probably better explain as what the the older guy was telling me how how I should behave, and no matter what they say, you got to keep you cool, and, you, and then you have to bow down and say go menasai. When they say, is it, have you got anything to say about the thing, you just got to bow, bow, bow down and say, you're sorry, go on side. Now I can remember it pretty easy. Back then, I'm learning it all, I'm very confused. Is that the equivalent of showing remorse? Yeah. It's like, a, you know, go on This is, um, so Maxi, this other guy that's been in there, Iranian guy, a really nice guy, but a bit, a bit of a dipshit. He kept on asking for his tea. He say, uh, he wanted it filling. And they said, how do you say it? He said, Ipai for full. So no, sorry, I'm kidding. Upai for full. He'd say, Ipai. The old guy in the cell would be laughing. He says, he's saying big tits. Every time he says it, he's saying, but I'm going, Maxi. I says, Upai, not Ipai. So this joke thing was going on. 
Can you see where this is going to go? So as I, so I'm, I'm really hanging on for the, at this point I'm thinking two to three, uh, I'll be happy with that. Not, none of this four to 10 shy. The first judgment, seven year, like that. Seven year. Oh, my head was absolutely, I couldn't get my head around that seven year. And what percent do you have to serve of that? You don't really know. We're all so much in the unknown. There's all rumours, everybody's talking about this and that, but it's pretty high. So, when you're told seven years, you're thinking, it's seven years, isn't it? And, uh, so I'm absolutely gobsmacked. As I think it back now, I'm, I'm still gobsmacked that they said it. And they says, is there anything you want to say to the judge? I'm just thinking, oh, right, no matter what, I've got a board out bound, say, sorry. I can't remember how to say, go menace say, I say, if I, big tits. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, but I didn't say it loud. Oh. I kind of, I was like, my head smashed, thinking, no matter what, if I, <laughs> saying, what, what? I said, I thought, shit, I realised what I've said. <laughs> but I weren't that arse, but they haven't full that. I, I kind of said, look, I, I can't remember how to say, um, sorry in uh, Japanese, I've tried to learn it, but, so I'll just say I'm sorry in, in English. I'm sorry. I'm not asked about this at that point. It's only like looking back and you go, fucking oh, hell, what a dick. <sighs> classic, classic me. So, uh, yeah. And then I went back the following two weeks and I got a hundred, uh, five years, hundred days. So was that a relief after the seven? I guess so. A bit, yeah. But we did know you would do... Because you're used to people going in saying getting 14, 15 year. Then they get, the final one, they get 10 year, 9 year. Though I was the only one with the cannabis. Everybody else was in for ice, crystal meth. <sighs> so they're, they're all, I think, 8 years for like a small amount. But I think the average like 10 year. Not good. So then you go to Chiba Detention Centre. Yeah, so we end up in Chiba. We'd heard about Chiba, and it sounded good. They said, oh, in Chiba, there's a radio there, and uh, the food's a lot better. You get your own cell. Um, I'm not sure if they said there was a TV. And uh, What was the food so far? It, so I was losing a lot of weight by already. It wasn't that bad. It certainly, the police station was probably the worst one. Gee, but the food was really good. When you say the worst one, what did you actually receive? Do you get like a burger type things with rice, um, bits of vegetables? Nothing amazing, but kind of standard. But the 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 police station was the worst, and Chiba was that was the only thing that was true, as far as I know. You got a lot, quite a lot of food, enough, and it was decent. So the first night goes in there. Uh, you put in your own cell. So everything when I've heard about it, I get put in this cell with these, these two other guys are in. They're going in their cell. It is so cold. I, ca I cannot tell you how cold it is. And I've also got, I've got all my clothes as well at this point. So you got your own, you put your own, your own suitcase. Gets everything in there. It was, I put all my clothes on, got all my underpants, stuck them on my head. It was, I was literally, shit. but they said like, no, you can't do that. Nothing on your head. Okay, so I led there, and it, oh, the, re the realization, the cold, and the isolation, the silence. There's absolutely zero talking. Because usually in prisons, it's just a never stop din. Oh, no, isn't it's there? the complete opposite. It's bizarre. No one it's talks. It's bizarrely quiet. Yeah. If someone talks, do they get punished? Yeah, yeah. You get, you get sent to punishment. You get, you know, <laughs> there is zero. There was just one guy in future later on at night time, and he used to annoy me. He used to do that. And it was that quiet along there. He was probably about 10 doors down. You could hear this. <laughs> and it was proper annoying. He felt like saying, shut the fuck up. Why are you doing that? And you could see the guard. The guard's walking past every 10 minutes. Where I was in, in uh, Fuchu, there's a button there. So I, I could see in here and pressing this button. Mm. There's a carpet all the way down. They walk and they put like slippers on. So like real slightly up and down all the time, basically just in a route. So you can see, you can see when the, this guy's doing that, like, which one is it? 
that's his way of uh, but yeah it was complete silence so you're in there for three weeks and then you as you're leaving you'd look at the old gatehouse yeah well i say i mean that th i i need to describe more how bad that three weeks was yeah like, like the, especially the first three days in there there was no view at all you're in a cell i say it's so cold i can't even read i've got i've got some books and stuff i cannot get my head around how bad this situation is i just could not get my head around so i couldn't read at all and um it's weird you're not even bored you don't get bored your head's too fucked to get bored you know there's too much shit so i'm thinking how can i possibly stay here for five years but it's the, this just isn't possible and um so you just worry you literally i went three days no sleeping by the by the third day was a book uh breakfast and tiffany's I remember Truman Capaldi's. Yeah. Such a very nice, simple read. And that got me through it. it took your mind out of the... Once I read that, like, smashed that book, I was like, that. Oh, I thought my brains had a break of going, oh, fuck. Just literally going, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. How, how, how can I get around there? You know, the same time you sat there and it's just bizarre. It's just some sort of bizarre head fuck. So, I, so by that third day, I broke and I got some letters. Finally, got some letters come through. So that was very emotional. It was like, like ah, oh. mail's it gold, is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's unbelievable. Got um, so you felt like a, a bit of re reality coming back. Yeah. So eventually, and also in there, you were, you're doing exercise on dog pen upstairs for ten minutes a day if it's not raining. So it was really, God knows how many times it didn't, you you get out there, but sometimes you get a little bit of sunlight on you like that. Oh my God, fucking sunlight. It was bleak, bleak in there. And when I left there to, <coughs> also you're permanently asking, saying, because you can write this little, it's a gensang, or you you put the thing up, say, can, can I get a translator, please? And then it was all, no, oh, cannot, cannot, cannot. Just, and, it's like that. You don't want to push it, but at the same time, you don't want to just sit there and just let them ignore you, basically. So I was permanently just going, well, why, why is there no translator? I need a translator. Day after day after day. And there's the, <coughs> I know these days, the longest, I can't, you can't imagine how long a day can be. You're just watching that shadow. That's all you can follow is the shadow, right? Around about the tea time and uh, at that o'clock. And uh, yeah, so I eventually gets out of there. Yeah, and it's like it's a really old, these big gatehouse, old brick, like a big dorms on side. I look back and I thought, fuck you, I will never go being in there again. I just, and the like, what we were going to sounded like paradise compared to there, that you're going to be with, together with other people, there were going to be a TV in the cell, blah, blah, blah. I thought, it can't, it can't be any worse than that. So I give it the old fuck you. Sets off, goes in there. Within two weeks, I'm back in there for another t three week. Why? Because um, I can't really go into it too much. But there was something else going on. I had to go to uh, another court case. I, gu I guess I can really. In my f in my phone, I had a number, a friend of mine who sent somebody else three days before me with crystal meth he got caught Ooh, this is how kind of conspiracy i got caught conspiracy and i don't even know the guy i'd met the guy once just met the guy i'm saying, say what do you do that's i'm right investigator and we're laughing about it it was a bit of a joke putting stickers around everywhere swap business cards i've got his card in my wallet Anna. <coughs> <laughs> Hasn't been arrested going through all the question. I'm thinking it's all going fine in this, my story. They're not too much on the why I was there four years before, which is my big concern. They were they were all over the place. The investigations were they were in my favour, rubbish. I'd flown a lot to uh, Hong Kong and Macau just my, through my visa. But um I was flying dodgy uh, business classes because um because we had a friend that could uh, we could do this. So it was cheaper to do that than do a uh, visa run to Cambodia or whatever. 
So they're on about stuff like that, which I think, fine, fine, there's nothing to do with anything. And then, then they get on going about this card. I'm going, that's, I honestly have no idea who the card is. After a few days in there, I've seen this guy, we could talk in the police station, I realised I've met him in Thailand. And then it all clicks. Oh. Ah, that's his card. Um, and the pillar could put my mate's telephone number on his flight ticket. Oh. Which, which that number is in my form. So anyway, I, I had to get pulled by. All I had to do was confirm that that number is in my form. Like, I can't deny it. So, I mean, I, I give him my best shot to saying he was, he'd was he been stitched up. I'd already been sentenced by then. He was looking at 10 year. Not sure what he got. But um, as they, they pulled me up, they just, all I had to do was confirm it. But I said in this, like, big courthouse, as the... So I'm pretty sure, so I know how it works, but uh, that guy's been set up. I like to think he thanked me one day, but he did get like 10 years, so he didn't do any good at the end of the day. Mm. And I said, the prosecutor who came to see me, questioned me about this number. I said, why was the defence not come to see me and asked me about this number? I said, nobody's, but it seems to be just one-way traffic. This is uh, pretty sure. I mean, he looked really bad as well in the courthouse. He looked, and I'd seen him like almost two years later, just before I was leaving, and he looked bad. Mm. But anyway, I tried my best for him. But that cost me like three weeks stuck. That's all I'm thinking. Oh, yeah. this is a fucking phone number. So, you know, but indirectly, I think that's how I've got caught as well through all this going, this backstabbing, put it that way. So, yeah. you, so you end up at Fuchu, which is known as being the strictest prison in the world. Yep. How's that then? Two weeks. The strictest weeks prison training. in the world. So the, when you first go in there, you've got to do two weeks training. Where, uh, and you're also, you're in a room with eight to ten uh, Japanese and maybe one foreigner. I got um, one Chinese lad and another Iranian lad. And the first time, the rooms, I mean, so just coming out of Chiba, just body warmth in a room makes a difference. There's windows at the back. There's the sun's coming in. That makes a difference. And there's a TV there that it comes on hardly, but it, it'll come on. Get yeah, one one film I got to watch there, and some like a, a like a yoga thing that comes on once a day. <clears throat> so then, as you're in there, you're going into the factory to learn how to work in the factory and how it all works, how to get showered, how to go through everything. It's a long procedure of. Um, you got like a book like that with the list you've got to go through, what not to do. So you're like studying, really. And uh, but it, that is brutal. That that's probably the worst time because you have got these little and large, this big bastard, a real even looking fucker, and then this little loud fucker screaming and shouting right in your face, really intimidating. But uh, yeah, I had um. I, I, so I knew it was going to be like that. I was warned it was going to be like that. And I just, I went in with the attitude of, I said, right, fuck it. Inf I'm, I'm going to be a soldier. It's me. I, thought, I always kind of fancied being uh, in the army. And you know, I'm going through that test. I thought it's a bit of an extreme version of the test. You know, they're going to be showering at you. You're going to do what they're going to do. So I learned how to march and everything. I just did, did it all. Instead of like trying to fight it, which some people did do, and you don't, you don't get anywhere with it. It's pay. Like, your thumbs are going to be down there on the side. You gotta look up. Uh, anybody else comes, you gotta close your eyes. You gotta face the wall. Um, it's uh, it's fairly easy marching. You see other people; they're not all perfect. The Japanese get more shit for it, to be honest. They get they're getting pulled out and sent to punishment a lot easier than us because they 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 think they we can't understand them same as well, which is true to a certain extent. So we had a little bit of leeway compared to the others. But uh, yeah, he was a fucker, that big bastard. I seen him on, on my last day, literally going out. And uh, he looked at me and went, I looked at him and I thought, fuck you, get me out of here. If I'm not going to say I'd do anything, I just thought, fuck you. So they misassigned you to the asylum. Right, so at, just at the end of the training, I get pulled back to Chiba, do that three weeks of that shit. By the way, the, three, the second three weeks were nowhere near as bad. I was kind of mentally prepared for it, but I had a bit of a break. 
the weather had just broke a little bit. And uh, so we were like, anyway, do that, right? Get back. I thought, I was one day off going into the main factory. Because every day, well, once you get in the main factory, it gets a lot easier. You get your, you get your own cell, you get your own TV, you got your own thing. It just sounded like it was getting better and better. I'm thinking, yeah, give me some of that. So the, the three weeks of isolation in shit bag. And then um, gets back there. Honestly, I could, I, I'm sure, basically, I could have gone left back to there or right, and the guy just didn't know which way I was going, and I went right. It's the only thing I can, how I end up in this uh, single cells. I'm thinking, why am I here? I thought, oh, maybe I've gone straight into the the main factory. I thought, this, oh, this is good. I, I've skipped all that, uh, all that thing. And then... Uh, I think the day after, they bring these like coat hangers with all the different sites. You've got to scrape the coat hangers off in the room. Okay, this isn't what I'm going to. So I'm giving the old, excuse me, uh, I think I'm supposed to be in the factory. I've just done the training. You know, I, nothing, nothing, day after, day after. Oh, what's going on here? And also the same. So it's completely strict. The guys are at the left and right of me. When you're shouting the number out, I could hear these guys weren't right. They just didn't sound right. Shouting the number, I'm thinking, what is going on here? I just think, have they put me in a nutty wing here? Have they put me in the wrong wing here by accident? But then surely they, surely they can't. It's kind of done. But yeah, yeah, they did do. So I was, uh, it's like, this is how bad it got in there, like my head was that screwed. But like I said, the longest days ever, you sat there, Pissing around, they're doing this job. Just, but you're just getting on with it. It's kind of something to do. It got to where uh, I thought it was going to be dinner time, lunch, uh, 12 o'clock. The, the king writes, 12 o'clock. Next thing he hears them shout, Tenken, bango! That means number. I'm thinking, number? It's dinner time, why are they doing it now? And I went, it wasn't, it was the evening. So somehow, in the longest day ever, I've completely missed where I am in the day. I know it sounds it sounds small this, but at the time I just thought I've lost it. I've lost the fucking plot. How can it not be dinner? It's got to be dinner. No, but no, it was. It was evening, and at this point I thought I saw like three weeks in there, or two or three. I honestly can't remember. And um, I was luckily the embassy, um, this Simon, he was called. He came to see me. Coincidentally, I said, "Mate." They've got me in the nuts house. What is going on here? I said, look, I'd already, I'd already said to the guards at some point, I said, listen, if you don't bring me a translator, so I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to do something. I said, I'm going to go on a hunger strike. I'm going to do, oh, it's, it's hard to do anything because you're, you're stuck in a box, aren't you? Very hard to protest you, all the, the dirty protest kind of thing. To be honest, it never crossed my mind that. But um, yeah, he says, uh, he says, whatever you do, don't go on hunger strike. He says, they'll tie you up and they will force feed you. He said, they've seen it happen. He says, it's, really, it's brutal what they do. So I said, well, what am I supposed to do? I said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I said, I'm going to punch one of the guards. I'm going to have to, uh... I said, there's not... He says, don't worry. I said, just, he says, give me two days. So okay, then, right. Day after he got me out. Wow. I was like, oh, Jesus. There was just one, uh, one of the guards that... And he was the guard that took me to the airport in the end that came to see me at night who could speak English. Not many can speak English. So I'm explaining the situ situation. He was like, really, he's going, look, I'll say what I can do. He, he had a mask on with a scar there, and I remember that scar and his glasses. And because he spoke good English. He says, yeah, I, I understand. I'll see what I can do. But, um, yeah, eventually. Back in there to do the training again. Start all the training again. That was like, oh... I'm expecting any, you, you're forever not knowing what's going on of um, when you're going, when it's going to be. You're permanently just thinking, what is going on? What's going on? And I had a bit, a few bits of bother with the Japanese in there. The fucking nuts they are, the Japs. As much as I do like them, they are fucking nuts. When they bring the food or anything, it's all brought um, on like a, a system where it all comes out and one's like putting the trays out, you go, eat like, oh, really get it down. Then you put it all, one's washing up while one, one of the was doing the floor. You'd have a boss of the cell. They suddenly, one, one's telling everyone what to do. 
and they've got so you're just doing it like you just go along with the flow because you don't want to anyway this boss was not job he's like quite old i don't know if he thought he was a big yakuza guy or whatever but he acted like that this old guy at night time he had a he had a bag on pissing me and this alex the um the iranian lad we seen this old guy going to the toilet at night anyway alex had been up all night writing less to his girlfriend day after this boss is going english you you pee on the you're pissing all over the floor in the, the toilet and went so I didn't even go to the toilet last night this is the old guy in it he he can speak fluent japanese the uh, so he's explaining it because him he just wanted to it's obvious it's the old guy and he did stink it's obvious him his bags all over anyway alex ended up leaving night after old guy does it again is that me Ooh, you're doing that again i'm going are you kidding me this is not obviously this is this is like a whisper in it you try you can't you raise your voices then it's something's gonna happen he's going you, you, you. And I was basically you dirty bastard and i'm going fuck off the same in it and then next minute um I think it's just like, mate, fuck off. You know, the next mate, voices are raised. And uh, he, he was an old old geezer, like, but he's, obviously, I'm I'm telling him to, clearly telling him to fuck off in front of everybody as well. And then, uh, but the, it's so quiet. Any, the, 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 the guards are all over the place. So they're in, dragged us both out, get put in a box for hours to, and they eventually come the translator comes and I, I explain the situation I said he's nuts this guy and uh, he says look you won't get sent to punishment this time but as long as you go in and apologize he, he, he apologized i'll apologize that kind of scenario i goes in i remember it this time come in and i he looked at me and went i thought you fucking cunt you bastard but I've already th thought, I, so I knew that what uh, punishment was going to be, so you just got to bite your lip, haven't you? Mm. So oh, prison sorry. transportation was quite interesting then. You had to travel around in, in a minibus with darkened yeah. out windows. It's like a normal minibus, like a blacked out minibus. You're, uh, you, you're cuffed up, like you, but you're all roped together. Not roped too, together? You're roped together. Whoever's uh, in a like, chain gang, whatever. Yeah, you're all together in it. It's not. It's not that bad. You if went, it was fun, you went past Disneyland upon your arrival. Yeah, I think I did see it four times. Going, coming back to Chiba, and then well more. Anyway, yeah, I seen it a few times. Oh, it's just, it's just by the side of the motorway. What's I, the uniform I, they give you? Uh, it's a shitty. Um, in. In the cell, it's like a greenish. That's not bad material. When you go into the factory, it's a grey pajama type thing. So should we pocket there? No other pockets. Just like yeah. And when you went to the hospital, you saw a dead body. First day uh, in uh, in Chiba, you got to go through. You get x rays You get quite. The hospitals are pretty decent to be fair. It's very hard to get in them. Dentists. Um, so we're uh, obviously it's, it's still it's freezing cold. I'm sat there with two other guys. I sit in the reflection, you know, like you can see the the. I'm going like that. I'm going. He's going yeah. Because so you're facing the wall basically, and uh, but the window there, I could picture it going past. You had a little lock. I thought, oh. but it wasn't hospital. I, I I didn't feel like it was like you're in uh, somewhere where they've just been murdered. Somebody. It's like somebody's just died, kind of thing. But they weren't the best out on the first day there. You had a medical exam. <laughs> yeah. So I, this is actually was bef before going to the uh, hospital. You, you wait in this box for ages, you're putting all your clothes, you're basically getting all your things sorted in. The, the main translator of the whole prison, he ended up being an English teacher, but I met him on the first day, a nice guy. So he's explaining to... Um, what we're going to have to do is, and when we go to the doctor, he says, now this may seem very strange, but uh, we're going to have to have to look down the hole in your penis. I went, <laughs> the hole in your penis? Yeah, the way, the way he literally said that, the hole in your penis. I'm thinking, I said, what do you mean the hole in your penis? I said, I said, what, your japs eye? And he, he's going, 
it was. I thought, oh my god, what am I saying? Well, I, I think it's the first time I realised what a jap I was. Yeah. Well, why we call it? Yeah. You know, because it's not something you think about until you're in a Japanese prison and you've got to say it. So that was bizarre. I thought the foreskin search was embarrassing, but they yeah. look, how did they look that down was, the hole in your penis? That was the first one. They don't did, really. Did they open it somehow? No, <laughs> they didn't really do it, to be fair. They, yeah. They have to go through the procedure. They just, pe they just gazed at it. Yeah, you basically just. Peter gazing, it's called in Yeah, you like that. This is bizarre. Yeah. yeah. And then it's done. Like I said, the dick doctor had come once a month to look. But all you like with him, he was a half decent screw. He. But he kind of have a laugh about it, you know. You just get there, you go, Wee! and you go, what? So, what contraband do they think you got hidden in there? No contraband. They say, I said, this, what, we all, what, what, they shove things down the japs. For what reason? Sexual pleasure or something. And uh, prisoners? Yeah. Getting off by shoving things in the japs? Possibly. And <laughs> one of them showed they, they have, they know, the ball bearings. Oh, yeah, like that are common like in the that. Thai prisons. I don't know, is it? Yeah. But yeah, the the, the, the jewelry. Uh, so I don't know if they do jewelry. it. I presume they don't do it through that way, but I honestly don't know. It was uh, yeah, a bizarre situation, anyway. So you get your own cell, yeah, with twelve um, foreigners and sixty Japanese in the factory. In yeah. the factory, and there's a there's a factory boss, mm. but there was also a child molester. You weren't a child molester. Okay, she was a young girl. As far as I know. He'd done what? A young girl. This is what we were told. I think he was a young lad when he did it as well. He was fairly young then. He looked like he was in his early 20s, but looked even younger. You know, that Asian look. But uh, he was the main... When you first go in there, you've got the big boss up there, then they put you in the first few, few chairs, so you, you can see the, before they kind of move you into the next system of the procedure. So, and this guy is the one to explain to translate he spoke perfect English I th I'm not sure he was Chinese he spoke Chinese English and Japanese so like pretty smart lad he seemed alright and uh, <clears throat> he was just asking questions and all that you know I said what are you in for he didn't tell me what he was in for eventually when I got to meet the other foreigners they went what do you think about the translator he's a, he's a bad one I said, what do you mean he's a bad one don't whisper yeah sorry I said what do you mean he's a bad one See, I'm going back to the I'm going back to the Japanese <laughs> this, <laughs> program you know. to whisper. Yeah, in fact, you 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 talk like that, or yeah. the, everything's like that. Yeah. Um. So um. Yeah, they said he's a bad and he'd uh, done something really bad to this young girl at college or something. Mm. I mean, you don't. We knew he was in for life. He was never going to get out. But he just he just looked. He didn't look right in the head. Mm. And then. After maybe two weeks, I got my first haircut. So in the factory, you get your haircut. I think, ah, oh, need a bit of an haircut. Yeah, like you're well ready for it. There's a big, there's a mirror there in the factory, and he sat there, and he's got uh, the mask on. The guy's, he's got the scissors, and he's cutting away. Go, oh, yeah. So again, you're like, you look, you're looking at the boss. Uh, you know where are you from? Uh, or like, and um, he's explaining. I thought, yeah. This is the first one I've met other than the translator who speaks really good English. I said, um, I said, what's with that guy, the translator? I said, he's a, I said, he's a bit of a sick bastard, isn't he? I said, it looks like he's still got blood on his hands. Mm. And um, I can't remember if he actually said it's him or he just didn't say anything. He like stopped talking. And that was more or less what happened. So as I'm thinking... And I'm looking at him in the mirror and I thought, oh my God, it's him. It's the same guy. I can't recognise him because he's got the thingy on and he's got these sharp scissors in my hand. I was thinking, oh shit. And uh, anyway, he carried on. He just like ignored me. He later got, um, as we're going through the factory to the, uh, what's it called, the physical, <coughs> the, the yard, he tried to slip a note to somebody. He got caught and got moved on to the next factory. Mm. So I was quite relieved of that. We were all very... He's the only one that really we thought were dodgy. You joined the Tug of War team. Yeah. <clears throat> so first day, I'm used to... I started like jogging on the spot in the cells when he could. Eventually the first day he gets run around the track. 
<coughs> in the factory. I collapsed because my legs weren't used to going forward. It was bizarre. I collapsed properly, like raised all my leg. <laughs> anyway, <coughs> the big boss came up to me. He said, uh, he says, what do you, what do you like at rope pull? I go in, what's rope pull? And uh, they, 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 they were Chinese, the new Chinese translator. He was a good lad. <coughs> he said, um, rope pull. I'm going, oh, tug of war. I said, I'm village champion. Because, you know, like the village fair, me and my mates, we were one hand way just between us. He's going, oh, you're champion. I'm going, no, 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 not champion. Just feel it. We just, it was a one day. He's going, oh, we've got a champion here. I'm going, oh, no, no. <laughs> I'm dropping myself, innit? He's going, fat. That. <laughs> feeling that. Because I was pretty fit by then as well. Yeah. My legs were like steel. So we are doing lots of yoga and stuff. And he went like that. Just feel that. I swear to God, it was like his leg was like that. He was doing the uh, the martial art with the uh, with the stick thing that they do. That was his thing. Anyway, he's obsessed about tug of, tug of war. Mm -hmm. I end up being <coughs> the anchor for the middleweight, and number three in the heavyweights. We weren't that heavy. There was not really that heavy. <laughs> that's how uh, <coughs> that's how light we were. That I was the anchor at, a, at an Olympic Games day. Mm. <clears throat> so that was a. Uh, this is all like a build up, months for building up for one day. Same with tug of war. That was like a six month build up. I think once every few weeks we were beating other factories all the way to the final. I'll tell you about the final as well, because this proper pissed me off. So we're pretty sure the boss has got money on it. We're all saying they must have money on it because they were obsessed about it. We're training all the time, training, training, training. Guess the final against this. There's two big Nigerian lads in there as well. They're like Limpha Christie's, they can. <clears throat> anyway, so it's best of three. We smash them in the first one. Our new captain, I think he's. Um, <coughs> sorry. I think he's somehow been paid off. So we get to uh, the second one. We're just going to win. <coughs> Sorry, man. Yeah, go for it. <coughs> it's the best of three. We smash the first one, second one. He's saying, right, this is what we're going to do. Slowly, 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 let them pull, let them pull. When we get here, they're tied out. Then we'll just pull. They're going, why? We're stronger than we can beat them. We don't ever, we smashed everyone. But these were strong. Just about to get to the end, with the, so where the uh, where the line is, it's like a mark on it where you get to there, and I can see this line going because I'm like third in. I'm going push, push, push. Also, this is one of the few times where all your factory can all sh shout, shout, and scream. So you can hardly hear anything. You got this. The guest there. I'm going. Oh. He went already over. So we dropped. So went. What the. Why, why, why didn't you say push? Like, oh, that's why I didn't, I didn't realise that we got that far. Oh, my God. <clears throat> it's 1-1. One, one. Right. We we're all says, right, we, let's just go for it like we did first one. The the captain, no, 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 let's do it again. But this time, we're, you know, I went, why? He only did exactly the same thing. I threw it. Threw it. Ah, oh, you bastard. We've got the main, all the main officials on the stage and everything in this gym. Mate, I'm putting stuff the floor as well. I'm fucking fuming. Oh. Yeah, that's where it bastards. So you had a dispute with a Nigerian mm. who had just come out of the punishment block for three months and he hated the <clears throat> English and said that yeah. God was telling him messages about you. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. I didn't know the English back then that we'd had some disputes with the Nigerians in the fifties or whatever. You know the full history of it. Colonialism. Yeah, I didn't realise we had anything to do with Nigeria. If I'm honest, as soon as we met, after so you you can't speak at all. The when you eat, then uh, so right you can talk. And this guy's just come in. When you go to punishment, you go to another factory. So he's, he's a new guy. Seems like nice as well. Also I've got a Nigerian American there. And uh, a Cameroon lad. So they were like, they were all basically the brothers kind of thing. And I uh, said, Oh, well, where are you from? I'm going, oh, from England. They're like, Oh, right. I'm thinking, 
it's all that about? Straight away, I thought, what's all that about? Anyway, it weren't a big thing. I'm like, okay. I'm, you too, but you've got a so little time. But you, you always have to fall out with anybody. So I'm like, okay. Then next to me, we're in the, the train, uh, the track. You can walk around. He's, he was saying about how the British did this and all. I went, oh, sorry, mate. This is not, uh, obviously, it's history and all. So I almost I didn't know. He says, um, I know about you anyway. God, <laughs> God comes and writes on the wall about about you, everything. So I know everything about you. <laughs> when he said, yes. He said, yeah, I feel like I'm yeah, yeah, like proper looking at me like, I said, well, what's he saying? It's bad stuff. I can't, I, I can't, I can't. I said, bullshit, it's me. I said, you've been in there for too long. You're obviously saying you're a bit loopy. He said, no, I know a lot of things about the you. I said, I said, I'll tell you what. I said, you tell me my mum and dad's name. You know everything about me, yeah? So I, I said, I don't know. It says, God will come and tell me the name. I said, well, I'm going to tell you. I forget what he's saying. I said, this is what's going to happen. If this was over the weekend. I says, you're going to come in Monday and tell me, give an excuse that you don't have the, the name. It was absolutely 100% he was going to do it. I think he believed it himself. And I come to the Monday, I went, yeah, I'm going to have you. He went, I can't even tell you what God said. I went, fuck off. <laughs> but yeah, probably a week or so later, he did come and apologise to me. He says, look, I've been in. I said, yeah. I said, don't worry about it. <coughs> I mean, it's got to be an S-screw in it. Come on, Nate, have one, mate. Yeah, 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 have one. Yeah. Um, who was the Jap Jim. pig cellmate then? The what? Jap pig cellmate. Oh, that's that's back to the uh, first guy I was in there with. Permanently retching. I feel like I need to do it myself, then. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm not going to do the noise, but fucking... Just retching yeah. constantly. This is the, the main, I was in there with him, so I remember it till the 10th of December when he went. So I got arrested 28th of October till the 10th of December. It was just torture, permanently, and just talking, nattering. I just couldn't wait for him to get out. He really did me head in. And then you had Mad Maxi. Then, then Mac, Max comes in, yeah. That's the Iranian. The, the, the Ipai Upai guy. Mm. He had a pretty good story, yeah. He came in that first night. He's got like two kgs of uh, crystal math as well. He's saying, uh, he, try, he, he said to me, he's giving the story was telling the police. I'll tell you how he's went, well, um, I, I don't know how I got this bag and uh, I, somehow I went to this. I said, Maxi, I said, look me in the eyes for Christ's sake. I said, you're obviously lying. I'm whispering again, aren't I? Yeah, yeah, whispering. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you're obviously lying, mate. I says. In a way, he, he told me the full truth of what happened, whatever. But he was sticking to it, so I said, I don't know. But he, uh, yeah, he was tortured. He had scars all the, the Iranians that they get up to some shit because they're all scarred up. My mate, insane, he was saying he was scarred up. The, the other lad I was in with for a bit, he was scarred up. So he was an hairdresser. Somebody came in, something to do with some political thing. They ended up arresting him, torturing him for about six months. He said it was a. He ended up escaping, going over the mountains to Turkey, and got to um, Canada. He'd been to Canada. He'd been there for about twenty years. Wow, Canada. He, uh, he was a character. He was a fitness fanatic. He had me standing on his knee all the time, like because he was. He was saying, "This well, my knee is so bad. I, I, mm. I tried to find him. My own. I can't find him." Paul mm. McCartney spent time in Fuchu. Yeah, that's what they said. Yeah, because um, they were saying like, "Where are you from?" Like me, I'm saying, "It's not, it's not a point saying Blackburn ish." Yeah. So I say, uh, whatever, either Manchester or Liverpool. Yeah. So it's easy to say they know Liverpool more. I like. would say Liverpool in America because then they, they yeah. the Beatles. Oh. Do, do you know the one person you know? You'll never guess who when you say like, "Where are you from?" England. The one celebrity, they go, Gary Lineker. Go, huh? <laughs> Gary Lineker. <laughs> so at the tail end of his football, he went there and he, and he had uh, his last year or so, and uh, he was like a superstar there. Wow. Yeah, never knew that. So you weren't allowed to talk in Fuchu, and to go to the toilet, how did that work? Uh, in your cell, you could actually just go in. You were supposed to uh, put the thingy down and ask to go to the toilet. After a while. Put the thingy? What's the thingy? Uh, what do they call it? Um like a curtain or something? No, it's like a, a switch. A switch. Outside, there's a, you press and you 
so the guard knows to come and see you. They have in English ones. They have a button, don't they? Okay. I think it's like a button. The light comes on. Yeah. They definitely ignore that. The English states, right, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But the, the the Japanese is a bit more because they're walking up and down all the time. They'll come and they put it down and go what? Um. Yeah. Well, what was that about? So Why? you violated the no talking rule when you were having mm. a pee sometime. So in the factory, you were. They're doing it's like a ongoing conveyor belt, of like people going for a pee four at a time. So I goes in, our four row goes in. The, so the toilets are at the back of the factory there. Again, it's absolutely freezing. The guy to the right of me just said to me, "I'm gonna have to whisper this." I get a bit nervous. He says, "Somebody, somebody, cold, cold." I went, "I, I," literally that that bit of the movement. They went out. You two out. And then they're all, the button's been pressed. The all screws come out. Like, oh, fuck. They say, stand there, stand there against the wall. Stand, you stand there, you stand there. Close your eyes. Um, so, and our big main boss, he's, I'm not sure if he'd seen it. He, or he, it wasn't him. It was like a, there's a conveyor belt of screws coming in and out. There's not a lot of them there. They, they do the panic button then. They all come out from everywhere. So we're off. And he came to see me. He said, hey, look. Just say you said, yeah, don't try and lie or anything, but I'll get you out of it. I thought, I know you're a, he's took a war team, he's the main guy. And uh, so you had like three hours waiting, the translator has to come just to say, did you speak in the toilet? Yeah, I just said, yeah. And yeah, and I'd never seen the other guy again, so he must have got sent to punishment. So you dodged that one? Dodged that one, yeah. I probably, there's another one. I, I'll go back to where... Uh, one of the worst times in the uh, training factory. So we've got a little and large there, giving it all that. And then you've got to, you're learning in the, in the showers, the shower rooms. You go in, in, in these blocks. It's like a massive bath. The sides, loads of showers down the side with a little, a tiny little mirror. And it's like a um, five minute shave, like twice a week, three times in the uh, summer. Shave five minute, wash five minute, dry down five minute. Or, or, you know, sitting in that big hot tub there. But you've got to pick your ra razor out, your razor and your soap, and it, it's brought to the Somebody's bringing them all. You've got your your own number. Mine was 79. Something about 79, I can't remember now, but it's pronounced differently than 7 and 9. It just doesn't work fully the same as, as you're learning the numbers. So I'm getting mixed up, I'd say 79. You, you basically got to, so you all, you know, you're all bollock or in front of this guy. You're the, you're marching there. You go, um, Nanaku, or whatever it was, seventy nine, and then you're gonna pick it up. And then you go like that, turn to your side like that, and then turn to your front like that, and you go hi. The highs, yeah, everything's hi, hi, hi. I mean, screaming, shouting, yeah. So yeah, somehow amongst this, I'm getting mixed, mixed up with the seventy nine number. I'm going. Oh, oh, it's going, say it, say it. It's going, bango, bango, number, number. I'm going, oh, fucking hell. Oh, I can't, I can't think, I can't think how to say it. And he's a little rat bag, this thing, you know, like a real nasty, look, nasty little like, kid, basically. Screaming and shouting, proper trying to push me. And I'm at the point, like, you know, you can feel the tears coming in me that mad. It's like that, that anger, you're thinking, oh, fuck, fuck, I can't, I can't say it, I can't say it. So I just thought I'm just going to walk away. So I just put a thought, and also I wanna, I wanna start uh, washing. I'm like freezing cold. I thought I can't handle it. I've gone, <laughs> my head's gone, and uh, I just walked away. And this other Iranian lad that was in the training thing, we talked to a little bit. He's going, no, Steve, no, Steve. I thought, no, I've gone. My head's gone. I just went and sat down and started washing. He's screaming his head off. I know the panic button's been pressed. I'm thinking, just get a quick wash before they do me. So they the best is come and drag me out. Not 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 too bad, just like pulled me out. I'm just going, what, what? Got put in the box. And I just said, I thought he said, go. As he was shouting at me, I thought he said, go and wash. <laughs> That's all I had. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't get sent in punishment. Because you're, you are in the training bit then. So maybe I've just got away with it. It's just this band's going to be teeth there. So, was there any heavy, heavy duty violence you no, witnessed? No, at all. No, everybody's well behaved. Handbags. There was a bit. There's a big, tall lab with alopecia. Spoke pretty good English. He came into our factory. 
he was, he was like a James Bond villain, but a nice guy. But they always didn't like him because he looked odd. That's when something's been said. Then uh, the whistle's blown. As soon as the whistle blows, you got to sit down. They've just pulled it apart and like ants everywhere. These screws coming from everywhere. You know, sat there with your eyes closed like that. But obviously, you're looking because there's other things going on. You know, even though you're not supposed to do a lot of this, you are doing it a little bit because you're pushing the ball out all the time, aren't you? Otherwise, you've got nuts proper, really conforming to it. And solitary is a month in isolation, no mm. TV, radio, books, writing with minimum food rations. You have yeah. to sit cross-legged facing the door with your hands on your knees looking forward. So I remember I haven't done this, but I know lots of people that have done yeah. it. Yeah. But I have done the isolation, which is the same thing other than you're forced to. Even normally, you can't lean against the wall, you can't. Uh, but then you've got, you, you can read and write in isolation. Yeah. In punishment, you, yeah, you've got to sit with your legs crossed. Either your legs crossed like this or sat on your legs like that. You know, like, you know, like when you're at school, four of them are no good. That one gets easier. By the time I was finished, I was more comfy sat like that. Was you? Yeah. I was sat in my bunk in, uh, in England like that. I'm thinking, yeah. oh, Jesus Christ. But, you know, after almost like two years, your body does get used to it and it does get kind of comfy sitting like that. Yeah. So you sit there, uh, hands on there, looking forward. Um, I think it's like eight hours solid. You're going to do that. You're not allowed to do anything. I mean, you can go to the toilet twice a day. You've got to ask again. And um, basically for uh, just to sit and think about what you've done wrong mm. for that month. And if you don't do it, if you do anything out there, you either get it added on or it starts again from, I, I was told it starts again. So like you can go to the last day and you do something around, they go, right, start again for your month. Mm. Because I knew one guy, um, uh, he seemed like a pretty nice guy, but obviously a bit a bit loose as well. There was something not right about him, but he spoke good English. He was like interesting to talk to in the, on the little breaks. But uh, at one point I was, we're in it, so in this yard, in the nut yard as well, when you get the exercise there, it's like a dog pen system. It's like a big round thing with the dog pens with the guy on the top, like looking down. Mm. If you if you went to the far side dog pen, you could just see through a gap. You could see everybody training, like the foreigners and everything, like just running and talking. They were like, oh my God, get me in there. Mm. That was like, ah, oh, like heaven compared to what it was. So I then, I'm in that training yard with my mate, the... Um, I says, see that place there? I says, that's the fucking nut house. So I was in there for uh, like three weeks. He says, I was in there four and a half a year. I went, no way. So how's that possible? So he stabbed somebody in Hokkaido, got sent there. He said, I just, I couldn't, I just, I said, fuck him. So four and a half years mm. before he finally broke. Of, uh, oh, I, couldn't, I couldn't imagine that. You had a fight with your boss over food? Yeah, so as much as I, I had a lot of respect with the boss. What did the boss look like? Big, solid guy. Very, they're all very serious. There's not, there's not a crack in that. But, uh, but yeah, I felt like we had a lot of his respect because we got to talk to him a fair bit through this tug of war thing. So, but, so when you're eating, when you got to, um, you got to talk, he was saying, lads, out, 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 come on, get training. So we'd have the translator there as well. Translator. So you got to bit of respect about him and all that. But by the end of it, I was just starving. I was starving all the time. You're not even the the food's half decent as well there. It kind of makes it worse that it's nice. Oh, you got a mini yeah. portion. Yeah, mini portions. I'm just drinking loads of water to try and fill up. I mean, I've done well since, trust me. But um yeah, so um one of the, so my job was sat there um, putting ball, ball, ball pens together. That's what you did in the factory. Yeah, that's all we do. Counting springs. Um, it's it weren't like they had to. You have to do this. You have to get so many done. You just basically crack on, don't say anything, and just get on with it. They're not bothered as long as you're doing something. Then they're, they're not bothered. But your so your class is it's a, a B class of bread. So we, you ever get a uh, foreigner, uh, you got bread and rice. But when, if you were a standing up job, it goes from that size bread to that size bread. It looks like a massive difference. And uh, so I was saying, look, I said, I said, can I have a standing up job? I said, 
I need to eat this bread. It's like, I'm, I'm so angry. He's going, no, I can't. There is no, there is no work for you. You, you can't do it. And then I thought, oh, I can't. Because I, I heard that different factories, they, was, they were all standing at work. By then, I don't know if I'm about a year into it. I thought, I've had enough here. I need to, uh, I need a bit of a break. So I says, um, I said, listen, I said, I want to apply to go to another factory. So I want to go and like, stand and he was like fuming because of this tug of war thing. <laughs> That's pathetic, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's all, honestly, it was all about the tug of war in there. And um, so he's going, no, it's, it's got you, you, blah, 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 blah. blah. He says, uh, the only way out of this uh, factory is a uh, show bash punishment. At this point, I said, I said, okay. I said, show bash it is. I said, take me to punishment. So he went, right, go, ow, ow. They come, drag me, not drag me, but they get me, take me to the box. It's like a really small little room. It's just like that. You're in this box for ages. There's little gaps in it. And you're, oh, you're hours and hours in this fucking box. Anyway, eventually, I'm there hours in and thinking, all oh, right, here we go. Punishment for a month. And then I'm, I'm thinking, at least I'm getting another factory, at least maybe, whatever. And then he opens the door, he goes, he said, yeah, you've had long enough time to think about it. He says, are you going to come back? I'm not going to say, he thinks he's doing me a favour. He says, I'm not going to say any punishment. I understand. And I, I went, I said, I'm going to get a job for it and get bigger bread. He went, no. I went, I said, punishment. He went, fucking slam the door on me. And he was off. I thought, oh, shit. But I'm definitely going punishment now. Eventually, a few more hours go. Translator comes in. But the translator had always walked to the boss. The boss has said to him, he says, look, I really need him for the tug of war. Get him back in here somehow. So he says, look, I've spoke to the boss. He's really sorry. He can't get He can't get The job isn't there. He realises how much... I said, he must realise how much stronger I'm going to be. If I get that much more bread, I'm going to be stronger. Said, anyway, no, he says, you can't do... He says, oh, just go back and he's not going to... You're not going to go punishment. Also, I have had like hours to think about this punishment. I'm thinking, I don't really fancy the punishment, if I'm honest. So I was back in the factory. <laughs> it was funny, like, seeing my mates together went, oh, you're back. How have you ended up back again? There was again, a skin of my teeth. There was a rumour about someone <laughs> getting killed with a fire extinguisher. Yeah. So I remember this, um, I said, I, I thought it, it wasn't true. But there was one, uh, Officer, he just looked like a bastard. And somebody said, like him, says, somebody once hit him. So then whoever this guy was, they took him away, beat the shit out of him, and uh, shoved a fire extinguisher up his ass and killed him. It, it sounds brutal, and of course it's fucking brutal, but I don't think it happened. It's not that I don't think it happened, but how would you know? But it's complete secret in there. This is why nobody knows about the prison. It's, it's a, you don't even know what the next factory is doing. You're stuck with your guys, but the next factory, you've no idea. And when you're marching from A to B, you're all together. The other factory can be coming because you'll hear them like, you'll go, itch, knee, san, one, two, three. Or shouting it, shouting your head off. They come, they go, stop, face the wall. They go past and, so you know, there isn't opportunity for these rumours to get around for them to be true. That's what I think, anyway. And it, from what I've seen, there was, it's just strict, but nobody, I didn't see anybody, like, being hit or anything, or, but the, the because was, they just kept pulled away. But there was suicides. Rumours of suicides, well, there's definitely suicides. But, so this is, we tell like how, how people commit suicide in here. And said, um, so when you're marching, it's only three floor. And there's like stairs going up to each, whatever. This is what they what they've done is uh, get our thing, run up the three stores and whoosh, jump off straight down. That sounds like the most plausible. But like they, were, um, they said, you get your, uh, you only had chopsticks. And you've got a toilet there. So there's there's your toilet here, and here it's fairly decent size window, like a normal size window with bars and everything. But it's that little bit of a uh, Small cells, very small, fist to fist. But with that window, it was doable, really. But they reckon that you get from the toilet, some on the bit of a ledge, jump up, get the chopstick, and land uh, 
for your art with the chopsticks. Yeah. What about hanging? The, the two hangings I seen was in the police station. Um, they were basically, because they take everything off you, but you can, you can kind of get things going you somehow. One guy uh, did it with toilet paper. What? Yeah. Um, and apparently, the guys that were in with him, he'd made this, um, just with toilet paper, yeah. you can make strong rope. Well, no you, way. Yeah, yeah. You know, like a weave, like her weave. Yeah? Yeah. So he made this and... Uh, hell? Yeah. And he hung himself? He didn't, he didn't kill himself. He, they pulled him out. Asked oh. him to get him pulled away. Wow. I think he was a Peruvian lad. Again, with the crystal meth. He was... Uh, and uh, him and a South African oldish fella, he got caught with like one kg in his underpants. Uh, it's an annoying bastard him. So who was Damage? They called you Damage. It's been nicknamed since I was at school. Why? <laughs> Fucking bit of a dick. It's just a nickname that stuck, literally from being about 14. It's a funny name, isn't it? And, uh, yeah. The accident prone. Not really. So <laughs> well, what, yeah, I am, actually, yeah, yeah. What did the top Yakuza guy call you? So I... Again, one of the team in the uh, tug of war, he was, and he was the main guy in the factory as well. Mainly, he like sorted the uh, the other Japanese out. He's um, I forget which one, but he was like a pretty biggish guy. When that old, but thirty five, heavily tattooed. They're all heavily tattooed as well. Um, so a lot of these things were going on because we we're playing lots of silly games. Like, I mean, it's hard to say how stupid these things were to make us laugh without getting sent to punishment. It was so subtle, like flipping your uh, flip-flops around. Like what you, you, if you're going to step out of your flip-flops there into the sink to wash your feet, you had to do that at the end of the night, then you got to step back into it with the guards you're going, one minute, one minute. And you're doing that. Ah, it's all like, it's all straight. Everything's like stress, stress, stress. Do it, do it, do it. You know, then, you, then you've got to get back out and put your feet in your flip-flops. If you, when they're not looking, flip the uh, flip-flop around, when you go to put your foot in, you can't do it. So you're like panicking. They're going, as you're trying to do that, we'd all do it to each other. You went, just put your flip flops on, you fucking idiot. You, went, oh, you can't say it's him, it's that bastard. So I was, I was a master of that. And also, when you're marching, as you're marching, just grab hold of somebody's hand. The, as they're going back, you pull it, then they're out of sync. <laughs> <laughs> so you're marching away like that. Like, oh, grab hold of them. And they're going, what, what's wrong with you? Can't you march? Yeah, they're going, it's that Billy. So from things like that, he went, you itchy band son of a bitch. So he called me itchy band number one. Number one son number of one a bitch. Number one son of a bitch, yeah. So did that, those humorous moments help you guys deal oh, with it? Yeah, yeah, massively, yeah. Uh, I don't think, uh, it's like a weird humour, isn't it? You're in the weirdest place that you can ever imagine. <laughs> it's just, yeah. Uh, it's weird. It's weird. We'd um, so me and who's saying he was he was worse than me. He did get sent to punishment. He, I think he'd been in three times. And another Iranian guy. You're mad. So what he'd do is when you so when you go from one fact our cells to the factory, as you go through, there's like a changing area. You you got a rag off. You got then bolt your bullet naked. You walk over a mirror. We uh, put your hands out like that. And give your own number, like uh, young Sen Sambia can need you at your band. And and so right, yeah, next, next. So you do so you can't hide anything, or you can, but um, you know. And then as you get through there, you go and stand uh you you'll get numbered, but before you get numbered, there's a little bit of confusion of getting people through. Then you can slightly go to the wrong place, like me and him would do it, I go to his place, get his old springs and stuff, but this way, put the springs in your hat, in his hat. So well, as you start there, they're going, right, stood there like that, right. Stan, hats on, like that. So get hat, fucking springs everywhere. <laughs> the guy goes, you could hear him dropping it in the silence. And he's looking around thinking, who's doing this? <laughs> so that was a favourite, the old spring one. And, and when you're doing, you sat there with the pens, like I know you sat over there, I'm springing out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So someone else played a practical joke then. So you guys um, were under threat of a nuclear strike from Korea. And oh, the, the no, big the, bus the, came the, in. No, this wasn't a practical joke. This was um, so. The, the, uh, the climate 
we've got a newspaper that's day old, like uh, the Tokyo Times or whatever, the English one. Like, uh, like the, so we've got that. So we know what's going on in the world to a certain certain extent. And the big news over there was we were going to get nuked off the uh, South Korean, uh, North Korean. They're on about they've done this test and they've reached so far. So it was it was a genuine concern, especially if, you, if you're there. You know, it's I don't know how big it would have been here the news, but believe me, it was like shit. And I'm thinking, ah, oh, what the chances of that? What happened to Steve Beatty? He got nuked in the Japanese prison. <laughs> so anyway, we're um, sat there having the meal, and this is, this had never happened. You're eating away because you've got to eat in complete silence as well. You sit there eat. Then they'll say, right, talk, like 20 minutes. But while you're eating, it's dead quiet. Big boss comes in, and he's not normally in there. It's normally second in command that's that's uh, watching everybody. So permanently walking up and down. He comes in all concerned. So, right, stop, stop, everybody stop like that. Well, this is a bit different. This is, um, he's, and, uh, so he's talking away, and like the people around are going, oh, I'm thinking, oh. We were like slightly talking to each other, going, "What do you reckon?" Um, we, you know, we, we know exactly what we're thinking. And then uh, Chink and the Chinese uh, Chinese uh, translator, he got to tell us. He says, "Okay, guys, Michael Jackson's died." I went, "What? Michael Jackson's died? Uh, so we're not getting nuked by North Korea?" Oh Jesus! Eh? Of all the things to stop, uh, obviously it's huge everywhere, isn't it? You won't there be any chance when that um, nuclear accident happened? No, I that weren't that long after. I think Wasn't I was in, in the March and I came back in July. That was lucky. Yeah. So. Mm. My flight, when I was told to come back, uh, the transfer, is when the uh, volcano went off in Greenland or wherever mm. it was. Remember that? Yeah. It stops all the flights. Yeah. I think you're like, what are the chances of all the things to stop me getting back? A volcano in Greenland. So on your way out, did you get moved to Narita? Back. I was back to Narita. Back to Narita. Yeah. And what were the cells the like there? No, it's the same. Same. No, I no, I went from Fuchu to uh, the airport. Okay. So you had to go back to Chiba? No, that that once I'd done the... Police station, Chiba, training factory, back to Chiba, then back to Fuchu. I was at Fuchu all the way until I got transferred. Oh, okay. So how does the extradition work? Well, uh, obviously that was the main thing. That's all you did because uh, the British are way better than any other country, by the way. And the embassy were really cool. Yeah. So, um, yeah, he came to see me, um, this lad, Simon. Pretty young lad, but he was all right, nice lad. You know, like, uh, pull the schoolboy type, type guy. Sound. Uh, he says, um, so I've got good news for you. He says, um, there's good news and bad news. He says, your flight's come up. I'm going, oh, no way. He says, um, I'm going, when, when? He says, I can't tell you. I said, oh. I says, no, can you tell me? He went, no, I can't tell you. He says, but. So the bad news is you've got the most expensive flight that there's ever been from uh, a transfer. And, uh, First said, class or something? No, just normal. Um, I said, how much? So he said, over £2,000. Well, honestly, they said a million. I got, oh, yeah, okay. Oh, well, you have I'll, to pay that. I'll pay, yeah, you have to pay <laughs> it back. They take your passport away until you uh, pay that. You don't get, you never get your passport back. So you, you've got to pay it. But I, I'm not asked. 2000 whatever. Freedom. It's, yeah. And, it, and it, this is one of the hard things, because I said, even though you can't say when I'm coming back, the World Cup, I think it was in Africa, was going to be coming on. And I had a god in me, I thought, I'm going to be home for the World Cup, I'm able to watch the World Cup. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not even that keen on football, really, but I just wanted to be home to watch the World Cup. I said, will I be home for the World Cup? He went, he says, when's the World Cup? And I'm, now, I'm pretty sure I said uh, June, and it weren't, it was in July. So I've said June. This was like looking back and thought, I know where I've gone wrong here. I've said June to the July. He went, it could be. Give me the wing, wing, nudge, nudge. You're going on for the World Cup. Yes, yes, right, that'll do me. I don't care, as long as I know when the World, before the World Cup comes on, I'm off. 
time comes by, gets to the World Cup, I'm going nowhere. I'm thinking, oh my God. You don't see him for every three months as well. I'm like that, oh, what's going wrong? So I'm writing the letters in what's going wrong. Obviously, I can't say I thought. Up and and then last probably, from then, it was maybe three weeks before I did actually go. But then few weeks, there was so long. I proper went. I went from being like like fitness freak, you know, as much as I can, to like just walking around. And I've got all my other mates in there saying, what's wrong with you going home? Mm. So I know I get it, I'm going home. But I was just, it like a... It's like you can put up with it for so long. It's like because I knew what was going on. Before mm. I'm done with all this, uh, all this, do your best and all that kind of shit. I've gone, oh, just get me out of here. It's long enough. Yeah. I think I found with a lot of people, it's like a two year barrier that you kind of you go a bit daft after two year. Mm. And I, I was at that daft point. Get me out of here. So how much time mm. had you served by this point? Six hundred and thirty days. Six hundred and thirty days. But, um, yeah, so the, one of the main guys in the office, when we're in the changing room, or I know that I, I remember this the other day, I, I, I forgot what one of the reasons why it fucked me head in as well. At night time, we were in the cell, um, a, a random uh, officer came to see me, says, uh, Stephen, sir, tomorrow you're going to be leaving the cell and leaving the factory. I thought, oh, whoa. I said, that's me, I'm off. So I'm thinking, brilliant. I'm buzzing. The day after, we were eventually get in there because you can. This is where you can speak a little bit in change room. I'm going, I'm going tomorrow. I said, no, or I'm going. I said, I'm going. I'm going. And with it, as the as the first break comes in, I haven't gone anywhere. Dinner time comes, and I got the translator to speak to the big boss. I said, I, I said I'm I'm leaving today. Um, he's going, huh? I said, yeah, leaving. That guy came to see me last night. Told me I'm leaving the factory today. He looked into it. He said, no. I said, you're not leaving. I says. Well, uh, well who, who's the guy? Blah, blah, blah. Nobody knows nothing about it. It, it made me think, I'm all going nuts here, that I've imagined somebody coming. I, I mean, I'm 100% sure this guy came up and told me that. But as the week started going by, you start to doubt yourself. Mm. Thinking, oh, I've got, was that just a, uh, I'm pretty sure it wasn't. But um, so when in the changing rooms, after this period gone, the guy says to me, he says, says Stephen, um, so I think this, this was maybe on a Tuesday. I think he said on Thursday. He's going, Thursday. He's going, shh. I'm going, he says, yeah. He's going, shh, don't say it. No. I went, yeah, yeah. He says, but, he says, Ashton, tomorrow, tomorrow, um, you leave here tomorrow. But, and then, but Thursday, you fly. So tomorrow, where, where do I go? He's going, I don't know, I don't know. No. I went, he says, but, shh, shh, shh. I went, don't worry about that. So I'm talking to all the lads. I'm going. I'm going. I'm leaving tomorrow. We tell the goodbyes and everything. And in the morning, the best is that as you're going out of the room, when you stay there oh, and face to stay there and face the, the window, I like away. So I'm like, oh. he dances there, like you know, to a few friends, like see you later. I did do a little bit, but um, but then yeah, they put me back in the nut house for the five days. No books, no nothing, mm. no anything. Because I was so convinced this time that he was telling me the truth. Mm-hmm. It was like, it was, there was no way they were going to break me at that point. And then, uh, yeah, they eventually came and I was off. So you had a Valium habit by the time you yeah. got back. So you're having to yeah. come off the Valium was yeah. hard, was it? Oh, it wasn't too bad. But after five days, I was like, uh, I couldn't sleep. I was, um, I did, again, didn't see the doctor for the five days at uh, Wandsworth. And uh, yeah, it was pretty bad. <laughs> they eventually got to, um, then they weaned me off them. Uh, yeah, it was a bit of shit. Was it nice to be around English prisoners and English guards? Yeah, the like the screws were sound. The screws were really sound. Uh, the guys that came pick me up, they were good. As soon as like we we got changed over like a, a no man's area, they went from like with them guys. But these guys were all right. The the Japanese ones. It was the guy with a scar. Yeah. Like he would talk to me on the bus, and uh, so they were all right. But the way they treated, because they knew they they knew how bad they looked, and now they kind of went, "Get, get!" It. It's just, he went, "You're with us now, pal." I'm like, oh. <laughs> the, they, they kind of had that feeling of like, "Fuck yeah. you, we're, we're going to look after him proper, not like you." Cons. Yeah, that's what the fella they were yeah, saying. That's nice. Yeah, he was, and then they said to me, "That what we'll do we'll get you on the plane, no cuffs or anything, and uh, 
we'll say to the bank, it's any trouble, so we've got to cuff you straight away. So says, no, we've, says, we've never had to do this. So we're like, oh, fine by me. So just don't drink, no alcohol, so you can do anything else. You know, one of the worst people I know was Erostas. They're both asleep. We're hours up there. I can't sleep. I'm just buzzing off uh, real life and everything. So I'm just in my normal clothes as well. And I said to her, I said, excuse me. I said, uh, I said can I have a coffee, please? She went, woke up the guy. She went, is he allowed to have a coffee? He went, yeah. He said, I'm asleep. So you were t- he said, like, you were told that he'd just act normal. I went, I thought, you bitch. Yeah. Oh, what yeah. a slime. And then uh, straight down, like, 10-hour flight to uh, Wandsworth. My flight was eight, only 800 quid as well, as it turned out. I end up paying for not two thousand. Good. Don't know. Don't know how that worked out. I think it was because of the volcano thing. I think that was like the original flight. The volcano thing happened. And that flight must have been changed because mm. it was less. I didn't have to resign it. Anyway, that's what I paid five hundred. Yeah, I spoke at Wandsworth to the prisoners. Yeah, Wandsworth. I, I loved it, mate. At first, ish. It was like an asylum. It was coming off the coming off down from drugs and stuff. It was screaming and shouting. I've gone from complete silence to complete. How's opposite. that transition psychologically? I, I was all right. I was buzzing. I'm like, it was were you not, still like somewhere. whispering and stuff? Thinking you had no, to the, whisper the, and you had the, to be the one thing that I, I was struggling to do was uh, the bowing. The bowing. Yeah. Um, no whispering. I didn't. I, I felt I was all right. Maybe like. Did you now, start? Did you start bowing to people? No, I didn't do it. I don't think I did it, but I could feel the urge. The to urge it. to bow yeah. to people. Yeah, I could feel that. <laughs> yeah. That. Yeah. <laughs> So what happened in was, the ma- in um, the mount after Wandsworth? Yeah, well, uh, the mount I ended up uh, working down the block, um, which was like one of the best jobs you can have down there. It means doing what? Um, cleaning the floor, giving the flask to like the, a porter. A porter, yeah, it's a piece of piss. Good money and everything. There's um, I say good money. It was twenty quid a week or something like that. But you, uh, they're all grasses in there. They're not great. Mm. They're, they're all they're only in there for. Um, not no non payment of drugs and there was one fucker in there. He was on my wing. He kicked off and he kicked a woman uh a screw when she was down. An older woman as well. Mm. And, and just a nice woman as well. I I remember when it happened to you fucking cunt. What a piece they, had, of they, they had him on camera as well. Yeah. We're kicking her when she's down. And and he's in there doing a dirty protest. Oh, I haven't done it. Uh, it's in camera. He was the it was the only one I really struggled with him because I'd seen and knew exactly what had happened. Yeah. But other than that, it's just what was it like oh, having yeah. food, prison food in England versus Japan? Oh, brilliant. Oh, so, Be- better so, rations, so, so, canteen. So, yeah, I had the bread all the time, jam butties, all the coffees and everything. Yeah. I don't know, the first meal, so it goes in there, first meal. Like, you've got to pre-order the week before, but when you're in there, you're in there, there's like a standard thing, gets there, like rice and curry and rice or something. There's a ma- massive load of chips, something like that. Yeah. I said, yeah, can I have a load of chips, please? I went, oh, sorry, mate, you're on a... A ration house says, I've just done two years in Japanese prison. I, I haven't had chips for two years. He went, oh, you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> and he piled them on like, that's one, Paul. <laughs> uh, and you got known right. as the Kenko kid because of all your canteen. Yeah. The, well, that was because uh, uh, I'm an artist who do portraits. Mm, that was so, your hustle. Yeah, that was my hustle. I didn't smoke then as well because I, I was, you can't smoke in there as well. I used to smoke like a chimney uh, back then. First day, no smoking, so I just stopped. So there were a lot of pluses, like towards, uh, like getting fit and healthy. Uh, while I was there, I, I was good. Six months back in the system before I started smoking. Somebody again, somebody owed me for a uh, Kenko for the drawing, throw me some burn back here instead of that. I said, "Don't even smoke, mate." And it was Christmas. I swear. And uh, next minute, I've rolled one. So you eventually get moved to the Kirkham Open Prison. Yeah. That was all right. That was I could honestly live there now. It was that good. Um, I got to be the uh, prison artist in uh, Blab Me Way around that one. Did you enter the Kersler Trust then? Yeah, yeah. I got yeah. Um, had an exhibition in uh, London as well. Walker oh, fantastic. Gallery. Fantastic. Yeah, that was good. We got a few quid off them. I got on the mentor scheme. They helped me become yeah. an author. All right. Yeah. Yeah. They're really good, aren't Kersler they? Kersler Trust. Yeah. yeah. They for people watching this Kersler Trust help prisoners rehabilitate by getting the energy channeled into art and other areas yeah really yeah, good people out good. of london so you had a uh, your best one of your best mates in kirkham was a crackhead dwarf 
<laughs> Bald Glenn from Burnley. That's actually what I wrote, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Glenn will be well known in the prison And this system. guy got in a situation with Purple Aki. Yeah, I'm not sure when it happened, but yeah, Glenn was my little mate in uh, Kirkham, funny guy, classic, like, funny. But he was, uh, I used to call him Meth Midge as well, because he was on the meth in there. He used to have a little box to, for him to get his uh, habit. But uh, he'd, um, he told me he'd, he got knocked out and uh, waged in a chair somehow and uh, bum rotten by purple hacking. Really? Because we've had people yeah. come on and say stories like this, and we've had other people come on and say that the bumming allegations are rumours. No, he got paid out for it. He told me. He got uh, sexually I'm assaulted. I'm sure he, saw he got paid like eight grand for it. Good grief. Yeah. Um, did you hear anything? I heard he got swilled as well, whether that was true or not. Um, you know, the swilling. And, uh, apparently, he went on a wing and a, a lot of uh, lads uh, went, steamed him, swilled him. I don't know if that's true. Did you hear anything else about Aki while you were inside? I never heard of him. Uh, Me, they're all on about this. Uh, okay, hell. And then um, next minute, I think I'd heard the story that had happened to Glenn before. Yeah. I kind of said to him, "Is it true about Purple Hack?" And he went, uh, "What was the um, Cambodian prison escape story?" Right. Well, it's, uh, so this is very recent. This this is on the end of last year. Right. Yeah, so I end up. I've had a bar and uh, a pizza uh, restaurant kind of thing on this beach. And anyway, we had a bit of trouble with this guy. This is in Cambodia. This is an yeah, island in Cambodia. Yeah, Korong. I'm not going to go through the whole story, but he, he was a troublemaker. He ended up getting arrested. As he's been arrested, he got a kicking as well on the way there by the. Uh, the day after, we were all kind of talking about it, what had happened and everything. And uh, the little girl in, in, uh, in the shop, she's saying, Stephen, he's drink beer next door. I went, no, 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 he's he's in the monkey house. Now they call it the monkey house over there. Yeah. Um, no, 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 he's drinking beer. And I looked over, sitting next door but one bar. This guy's there that I just had this fight with. And um, he sat there drinking beer with his mate and his girlfriend. And the... The big boss is where we were at. I'm sat there with his chief uh, colonel in the in the navy, and our big boss of the island, who is in prison for life now as well at the moment. There's, there's another story. <laughs> yeah. Not going to go there with that. But and so before they get uh, he gets banged up. He's like the the big boss of the island, and then he's going. I said he's there next door. The guy um, next minute on the phone call. And he's escaped last night. I said, what do you mean he's escaped? So how I went, anyway, I got to find out through another lad what actually happened. So they've took him up, he's tried to escape on the bike, they've, they've roughed him up a bit, banged him in a cell, which is not that far from us, just like literally this small village at the back of us. Yeah. They've put him in there, I know his friend's gone to get his toothbrush and whatever to like look after him, he's come back. The guard's asleep at the side, so we can't even wake him up to do this. He's gone to the room that the cell is in. The door's open. The guy didn't even know the door was open. He climbed through the window like half an hour before. So they left the door open, and he's climbed through the window, just in his underpants, uh, and he's roaming the island. Wow. So he can be the day after. Wow. So that's me, a prison escape story. I did used to think, did you, like, when you were in there, like, I might, like, how could he escape? I was never going to try. Because my sentence definitely weren't long enough to raise, but you would think, if you're going to do it, how would you do it? I mean, nobody's ever escaped from future and all that. It's well nice, it's, it's as secure as you can get. It's unbelievably secure. Have you still got this place in Cambodia? No, I, I just left there just before the lockdown. Just before, just before. Been there for right, 18 months for that. So, you're obviously like a foreign adventures then. Yeah, yeah, I like a good is adventure. That, is that what you're going to keep doing for the rest of your life? Yeah. I, Probably, yeah. yeah. Yeah, fuck it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's, it's that, it is what it is, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I, I actually, other than what it did to my family, the old experience, mm. I actually don't regret the old experience. Did they come out and visit you? No, no, you couldn't. No. Couldn't vi no, visit? I, uh, you could do, yeah, but I didn't want them coming. All right. It's it was massive. too long. Yeah. And uh, in many ways, being over there was a lot better than being in England because mm. you're, you're not... Uh, in England, 
And, so, and if you have a girlfriend, whatever, a lot of lads in the, in the, the English system fucking going nuts mm. on the phone. It's all it's all about this and that. Over there, you kind of you're in a different world. Like Christmas and that was better over there. Mm. You're too you're too it's too real in England. Yeah, really. Yeah. You feel it more. Yeah, you feel it more in many ways. There's there's lots of things that are better here and worse there. In some ways, if it weren't for the cold and the food, I'd rather be there than here. Because you're dealing, honestly, you're just dealing with Jerry McHale's. It's You know, like the Jeremy McHale show, mm. just utter knobheads everywhere. Yeah. And it, I don't know if I put it in there. A lot of them, they they can tell, right, I've never been in prison before. Because mm. I'm not used to how, how things are said and everything. Because I'm of certain age, they have me down fucking nonce. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, Jomo. Yeah, Chomo so you, so you got so, yeah. so they tried tried it on with you, did they? A couple occasions, um, just one lad like blatantly like called me a nonce. Yeah, I just see when I was going to Wandsworth, I had it in my head mm. that I would be fighting like fuck. I was going to be, you know, yeah. and I'm thinking I was fit as anything. I was proper up for it. Yeah, fact, but the screw says, listen. Get your head down. You'll get your cat D. So you don't get any trouble or anything. Within a few months, you get your cat, cat D, and then you'll be getting home visits and all that. So already I'm thinking, oh, right, that sounds good. Play it safe. Play it safe. Avoid anything. It wasn't that I wasn't angry with anything or anything, but I was just like kind of, I just got it in my head it was going to be like that. Yeah. Then I thought, no, sod this. So I, I did my ultimate best all the way through not to get in any trouble to so get me to get my cat D and get the fuck out of all this system. And thankfully, you know, I touched wood, I did do it, but it was so hard to, to do it. What about this guy who challenged you then over being a... Well, he didn't challenge me. It was someone over food, whatever. I'll like, put anyway, and fuck it off, you nonce. I said, I'll tell you what, mate. I said, get to... Because you've got your papers. Yeah. I said, come on, see. I said, come and have a look at my papers in the room. So once you say that, so I'm going to get the fuck out of your lanky cunt. Yeah. Some lanky like and uh, and a, a couple of other things where they were just being dicks. And so you, I'd have to very sly like, oh, I said, listen, pal, pal, I said, get to me fucking pad. Just don't give me all this shit in front of your mates. Yeah. Get to me fucking. Obviously, I don't want them to come. I don't want it to happen, but you've got to do something. Yeah. And I was laughing and joking anyway. I didn't, I don't think he really had that. I wasn't trying to be an arm man or anything. I was just trying to be a. It's hard to stop the fight it's in America hard. once that it's, happens. The fight, it just the escalates line is, very quickly. The line is so... Yeah. It's like a miracle. I would never got wow. in any trouble. Wow. Really was fine line there. There were a couple... Honestly, I remember closing that door like that going, oh, yeah. fucking fuming. I'm just going, cat D, cat D. Yeah. Just ignore them. Just fucking... It's always the scumbags. It's never the genuine... Not one case where they were like, some our guy was thinking, I'm, I'm in shit here. I'm going to get done over by... It was just scumbags. whatever good plans you've got in prison. There's always someone going to try and sabotage it. Yeah, it's a very Did they just get off on it. It's a very uh, down place, isn't it? Yeah, and it's all blame. If he's got blame, he's blaming it. They, they, they want all the random say, yeah, yeah. I fucked up. So, Steve, is there anything you'd like to say to people watching this in conclusion? Perhaps young um, people who attempted to smuggle drugs around the world. Yeah, good luck doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, it's up to you. You know, you, we all know the down. It's not. It's not a shock that if you get if you smuggle drugs, you get caught. You're going to fucking prison, are you? Yeah. So, no. I, actually, the, the main reason why I wanted to do it was so much little information for the families of. Uh, so for all my family, whatever, nobody knows what's going on. You can't find what's going on. As much as I'm writing like saying, "Don't worry about it." It's just like. There's no, there's no violence. There's no this and that. Mm. It's just strict. I'll be fine. But you don't. Nobody really knows what's going on. Yeah. And there's no way of finding it. Still, there isn't any way of finding out what's going on because it's so high level secret. Mm -hmm. So if, even though there's only maybe three or maybe three, four, maybe two, that are in the British that are in there, but they will, cause they will be there now. Go for a bed. Um, but their families can like uh, they can get older me and somehow and I can maybe reassure them more. What's your preferred method of people contacting you? Ah, oh, this is true because I'm not. Is really it an on. email address or do you have um, a Twitter or Facebook? We could put all of your links below yeah. this video, whatever you want. Yeah, we'll sorry that after because I'm not. I'm not very uh, up sort on it out after. Anything. You're not onto you know. social media very much. Yeah. Do you have a book coming out? No, no books, no nothing, no. Uh, been given this book. <laughs> 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 
No, uh, I I have thought I when I was in there, I actually wrote um, three stories mm. because when you're sat there on this thing, you're doing nothing but thinking. You've got so much time to think. Yeah. So I actually wrote three stories, and I'm not going to do anything with, but it's just a way of passing the time. Yeah. Um, I tell you another book that actually was um that got me through is Papillon. Oh yeah. man, absolutely brilliant. I tell you what, I read it twice. That I I read it twice. Luckily, before not that long before. Yeah. When I was in the isolation, yeah, do you remember how he did? Because he did like five years in the isolation. So I, me, after a few days, I'm thinking, right, I remember how Papillon got it. He basically closed his mind off and went to these fantasy worlds like a story. And I basically did that. And I, I tried to think to myself, look, I'm fine, actually. I'm pretty healthy. I'm only going to be away for a couple of years. And I think of all the stupid things I've done in the past and all what I've got, got to come. And so I'll be imagining these stories and going through, like, living a fantasy yeah. a fantasy world in your head. And, and in the film, he, he kind of showed it, but in the book, mm -hmm. there's a lot more. So you basically got to do it. You've got to make a world up that's going on. Yeah. And I was so grateful for that kind of, that way of thinking. Well, books got me out of there. And also, when you read about other prisoners' experiences, like... yeah. The Russian gulag, you know, uh, Ivan Donosovich. It, it makes you feel like you, you're blessed, really. You, the first time I did the uh, the successful one, do yeah. you remember the book Damage Done? Oh, Warren Fellows, Warren Fellows Thailand. Done, like, oh, that the was guard brutality. The first, yeah. yeah. So oh. obviously, it was my nickname. Yeah. I, when I was going through the airport, I was setting off through Bangkok. Mm. I just remember thinking, it was always there. I thought, don't look. I don't want to see that book Damage Done, the Damage Done. Yeah. And uh, as I'm going past, I thought, I've got to have a look. I just looked over, yeah, books there on the top shelf, damage done. I thought, oh, fuck. Anyway, thankfully, that time it wasn't what it was to be. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, I don't, overall, I actually think that their system in many ways is right. Mm -hmm. Because nobody's going to wants to go back there. Yeah. And you're not massively treated that bad it's just mentally psychological but also like a few years on i'm looking at it in a different way as well mm -hmm. it does but when you are there it is it's, it's bad but it's yeah. doable yeah it's brutal you've got to be you've got to be positive no negative shit mm -hmm. and it's all about you're going to be right and and not trying to beat the system um English prison, complete opposite. It's full of losers, isn't it? Really. And if you're... They buzz off it, don't they? It's nothing for them. They're completely wrong. They're, say, like, somebody's done something to a member of your family. Mm. You would not want them going into an English prison here because they're tossing it off mm. with their mates and piss. They go in there, they, they would have time. To, there's no canteen as well in there. There's no. There's no extras. There's no... You name it, there there isn't it. Yeah, there, there literally isn't. You get a, a film comes on twice a week after six months being good. <sighs> yeah, you get like that after three years, you get an extra film. There's like level of badges: uh, white, yellow, uh, red, and blue. Mm. And it's uh yeah. So well, I can, I can go on forever about how strict it is and. It, it, it's not something you could ever truly imagine. Unless you're there, sat in that cell, thinking of what, you, what, is gonna, what you're in, the shit you've got in. It's impossible, because you're not, you're not in there. You're not in that cell. You can sit, you go and sit in that room there for an hour, and you, you've just end up being bored. You don't get bored in them situations, because your head's too fucked. There's too much shit going on. A woman wrote to me while I was in prison, and her brother was in prison in Japan. And she said that he was subjected to an anal cavity search with a glass rod. In Japan? Yeah. Did you ever hear anything like that? No. Might not have been the place you were at then. No. All right. So no, people watching this, um, we'll put some kind of contact detail in the description box for Steve. And please let us know in the comments what you thought of this video. Huge thank you to all the new subscribers. Subscription logos in the bottom right hand corner. Huge thank you to people who donated as well, so we can film these in the podcast studio with James and Joe, our cameraman, and sound sorry, engineer. Sorry, Sean. Yeah, go for it. The prisoners abroad. Yeah, I don't even know about them. We'll put a link down in the description box to they Curse were of Trust and Prisoners Abroad. Both charities helped me 
and Stee. And yeah, it was huge, Prisoners huge Abroad show. who entered my um, short story into the Curse of Trust, which won oh, the award, yeah. which got me on the mentor scheme, which led to me becoming an author. That's brilliant. I couldn't get anything to them, but yeah. we used to get all the stuff. Yeah. One of the first things they got, they were like, ah, oh, did that, they got me into doing yoga and stuff like that. Yoga yeah. is a huge thing, isn't it? Yeah, yoga was huge. Over there it was. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I haven't done it. I, I always thought I'm always going to do yoga. Yeah. Like, heck, no, I've been back on the piss smoking me off. Oh, <laughs> man. Got to get back on it. It's yeah. good to do. Um, this is lockdown. Do it's a bit in the morning. Do my son's solid You still do it, yeah. I wake up, yeah. I'm yeah. surprised I haven't kept it up, actually, but. Can't quite do Scorpion or Headstand Lotus anymore, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so All right. huge thank you to people who donated so we can do these, uh, record these professionally. And we have finally got back up to publishing two podcasts a week right now. So let's see how long we can keep that running. Donation links are in the description box as our links to our other playlists and everything else we're doing. All right, man, give us a hug. All right. Yeah, yeah, cheers. Thanks, yeah. brother. Well told. You got, you got a very happy disposition.